Hey y'all, it's Jimmy Stovall. Welcome to my podcast, Ribbon with Jimmy. Whether I'm in the restaurant or on TV, one of my favorite things is talking to people and hearing their stories. And I believe the best way to have a great conversation is over a meal. So first of all, you brought me this amazing, probably one of the best. Oh yes, yeah. I've seen. Oh yeah. This is the new mural at on Ground this, Zero. At Ground Zero Blues in Clarksdale, Clubbing. Mississippi. Yep. Maybe that camera will pick it up. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. That is seriously cool. Thank you. I love art like this. I love um, yeah, it's sort of street art, me. things like that. That is that is amazing. So this artist is uh, Devin Liston out of Los Angeles. He is uh, a very talented artist that I've known probably 15 years now. Uh, he actually lived in Iceland with us when we first moved there. And kind of anytime I need inspiration, he comes and uh and lives with us so he's living in clarksdale now <laughs> oh, with wow. his wife oh yeah wow. she was like wait we're living in la wait in, where are we now yeah. <laughs> what is what this is, is a clarksdale? little different <laughs> she said yeah <laughs> okay so what okay so besides yeah. the amazing so that's gift, the mural thank you that's on ground zero we're actually painting another one right now it's a part of a series you know clarksdale is one of these magical places uh where you feel a sense of place. I mean, you and I talked mm -hmm. about when we first met and, and you had some really cool photographs from coincidentally the the porch of Ground Zero, <laughs> exactly. And there's yes. this blues alley cap. <laughs> yep. That's actually the building that you're that right there that we're painting. Really? Right now. Absolutely. Wow. We are painting the side of that building with a continuation of that mural series. So if you pull the mural real quick, I'll show you. Yeah. So these are actual if you could believe it. So the story goes, so this piece is called Midnight at the Crossroads. And at least we won't get sidetracked. It, you or I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this whole thing is sidetracked. <laughs> what are we talking about? So this is Robert Johnson. Okay. So actually, the crossroads themselves are where the Yellow Dog Railroad, Highway 61, and 49 meet. Yep. It's actually right here. Okay. 40 feet from Yep. It. And so Robert Johnson is looking at the mural. These are the devil's eyes. Oh. And then this is uh, Mississippi John Hurt and Muddy Waters. So these were the really progenitors of the blues. Right? Yeah. So this is the original in the series. The building that you have the photograph of sits right here, okay. actually. And that building is now being done with four new artists that came all came from Clarksdale. Wow. So it's Sam Cook, Nate Dog, uh -huh. um, John Lee Hooker, Conway Twitty. Uh, and then there are two more on the back that are going to be Ike Turner. Uh, and uh, we've had a debate about Ike Turner, of course. Right. Ike Turner and uh, Watermelon Slim. Okay. So it's all the musical, kind of the musical yeah, of diaspora that, of that yeah. happened as well. So, so a lot of these artists left where the crossroads are. So the story is, of course, Robert Johnson's yep. playing the guitar. A man comes up behind him. It's the devil. He makes a Faustian deal with the devil. And then, you know, musicologists believe that they're like five hands on the guitar, right. like this is impossible. And so it actually, a lot of people don't know this, it's where the 27 Club began as well. He was poisoned with bathtub gin at age 27. And of course, the 27 that, Club. Did you bring bathtub gin today in those that tubs? That is exactly okay. what, okay. what it, that's exactly why I talk so fast. <laughs> Uh, but that's where the 27 Club began. Oh. So then you have Janis Joplin, right. Jim Morris, all these famous artists that yeah. died at too right. young at 27. But Robert Johnson began that in 1938. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. wow. Five towns claim his unmarked grave. Of course. I yeah. Mean, yeah. <laughs> right. Pieces. All right. So tell me, you walked yeah. in and you said, oh, brought this and your unloaded right. coolers. And, right. And you say, I love stickers. I do love stickers. And I was stickers. like, what? <laughs> You so know what? we had a sticker party this morning. Uh -huh. We had a sticker party in the car, uh -huh. putting the stickers on these. These and, are vinyl. And what did you say about stickers? So I just think they have this amazing ability for you to capture a moment and apply it to something. It's like a mimetic content architecture that you can like make anything fun. Yeah. So it's like I always. It's a great trick. You know, nobody likes the back of a monitor. No. It has no purpose but to look ugly. Yeah. And so every monitor I have. Has stickers. stickers and then it's like a living scrapbook okay. because people people also are sticker people so i have it all yeah. in my luggage i've Le had multiple yeti, people. yeti is a, it's a thing with they, yetis you they put come stickers up, from all over they come up to me in the airport and mm -hmm. they're like oh i have a sticker for you 
So oh. I always have a sticker ready. Oh, that's cool. Like, like pin trading. Club. Like pin trading. It's ex- well, I mean, I'm yeah. from Disney. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to refer to the Olympics, but yes, Disney, of course. And so you. I mean, people at Disney are serious <laughs> about their pins. So you also brought yep. um, these great mason jars. Mason aluminum. jars, but they're aluminum. Yep. Mason jars. Yep. And so tell me before. It's kind of a Moscow mule cup. Because everybody likes yeah, the metal, the, cold, the way the condensation the cold, yeah. works. Yeah, and yeah. these vinyl stickers are holding up. Mm-hmm. Which is very they good. are. Very good, Brion. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, and so um, we are going to serve these at Juke Joint Festival this weekend. Uh, this is a peach pick, uh, which is vodka with Yopan peach tea, uh-huh. which is part of what I brought you. And I'll tell you this. Do I have to drink Yopan. out of the straw or can I take the you top off? You can take the top off. All right, good. To I'm not a straw. straw guy. We're just being COVID. You know, we're oh, being sorry. Smart. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a strong either. Wow, and in fact, delicious. when people put, str- it's delicious. Oh, I thought you were going to say so it's strong. Good. I don't think you said that. So this that. is the first time for you to, it is a little strong. This is. First time for you to taste Yopan tea. And let me tell you this too. Well, let me taste it first. Yeah. I hope he likes it. This is a live tasting. That's, I have to say, that's really good. It's strong. <laughs> It's strong, <laughs> but it's real. It's really, really good. It's delicious. And let so me tell is, you this. And so I, I decided not to tell you until I took a sip. Sure. I don't drink tea. I don't drink iced tea. I don't drink hot tea. I'm probably the only Southerner who does not drink tea. So you brought this in, and I'm all of a sudden going, "That's all right. I can get through it. I can get through it." Yeah. That to me doesn't have that flavor that it I don't have like. Tannin. It which doesn't is the t- bitter flavor. Oh, that's what I don't like. So that's the big deal. So that's the kind of story about you that, just unveiled something to anyone yep. listening that I don't drink tea. Uh, Most people would very know non-southern. That. It really is because I drink six, and I don't eat I think, wa- I and I, I don't eat s- watermelon. I went and threw it all out there. <laughs> anyway, opposites attract right? because. <laughs> My my actually my husband's nickname is watermelons. Oh, okay. because he loves like that was his. He had a he's a big he's a big festival music festival okay. guy. And his dad gave him an old shirt that had like watermelon prints on it. And we were at Coachella one year, and this girl tripping out of her mind ran up to him, <laughs> and she started scratching the watermelons like scratch and sniff. And she's like, watermelon. Like, watermelon. And that, that quickly and became that, a nickname. And that became his nickname. <laughs> That's awesome. He's actually watermelon on Instagram. Yeah. Okay, so we got all these stickers. Yep. We've got these amazing uh cups yep. with a great drink in it. Yep. With your new tea that we'll talk about in yep. just a little bit. Sure. So let me give you just a second, I'll tell you kind of how we do this podcast. God, so it is good. So I think I've been in the restaurant business my whole life. Um, that the drive-thru. I did. And so I think that the best way to have a great conversation, get to know somebody, sure. is over a meal. Great. And so we're going to share a meal today. I picked some things I think awesome. you will like. Oh, good. I was starving. Yeah, I, was I figured I was you like, were. Yeah, we're going to have fake food. Were. Fake food, yeah. Just for the TV. <laughs> just for the TV. <laughs> for the Look TV. how good this looks. It's all shined up. I heard they use glue for milk, like Elmer's glue uh-huh. for milk. Oh, you know what ice balls. cream is No. in food styling? Yeah. A lot of times it's Crisco. And it's scooped, but mm. it looks just like ice cream, and, and it doesn't melt <laughs> while you're waiting on the perfect shot. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right. So taste in there. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to introduce you and kind of go through. Sure. It, I can't even, it's not even right to say it's your bio, because it's not. It's like a snippet here and there <laughs> of the cr- incredible life you led. Oh, thank you. Um, so, But before this, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit, to give you a little bit of background on me and the customer and people listening. Uh, and that also will, everyone will forget once we get to you. So I'm going to say it first. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been with Corky's barbecue for 26 years yep. here in Memphis. Um, I did start in the drive through, um, in college and hoping one day to wait tables cause that's where the real money was. And, uh, <laughs> I, I waited tables and moved up to management. I got the opportunity about 20 years ago to go to QVC, the shopping channel to sell our barbecue products, um, to the nation. And I was completely fascinated by the model, the customers, the instant gratification yep. of the sales and knowing right then what customers are it's liking funny, and what they're not liking. It's instant gratification, and I love that. It's instant feedback. It, instantaneously. Instant I feedback. know the yep. producers are talking in the yep. ears, and I know if I'm selling a honey barbecue sauce or a different sauce, if the customer's watching right then, are in, more interested in the honey barbecue sauce. I can I can steer in that direction because that's what they that's like. Right. And there's no other way 
there's no other platform that yep. gives you that. It's fascinating. The internet came cl comes close. Yeah, I've done a few. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, big internet projects in my day, and we would actually write narratives based on the feedback. We, we called it iterative storytelling. But it's so exactly what you're saying: adapting your pitch, right. You know, for a product, right? Um, we we did a, a really crazy experiment where people believed they had a toy as a child, which I, I won't get too deep into. It's with Disney. Yeah. Um, and they really believed they had this toy as a child, but we knew the toy was created in 2006, not 1983. Oh. But in order to get people intrigued in it, we called it alternate reality games back then. Uh -huh. Now it's called fake news. Right. <laughs> it became a dangerous weaponization of, for many different reasons on all sides. But back then it was very innocent, the early days of kind of storytelling on yeah. the internet. And so we would have story arcs and we would watch the feedback and we would actually change the storylines based on the feedback like we did a project with uh ashton kutcher and mtv uh i think it was called room 42 because houdini the room houdini died in and we would literally every episode we would hide frames uh -huh. like 24 frames a second we would hide a frame with clues we really? would play a game every episode online it was like to go into your subconscious were you exactly trying to see that's, it that's yeah. exactly right and wow. so so i remember when when people were like oh you didn't have that toy, Lotso Hug and Bear. You didn't have him as a kid because we made these amazingly accurate 1983 fake Look, ads. Yeah. Like, Lotso, Lotso, Lotso right. Hug and Bear, you know, that kind of thing. And the one of the people in the audience was like, no, my parents got in Japan. So we immediately went and made a Japanese ad. <laughs> and we're like, see, he was right. That's you right. Know? He exactly. sure did. <laughs> exactly. So I, 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 I've. I'm so intrigued by QVC and its feedback. Loop. It's amazing. Oh, oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing, it, it's, it completely changed my life. The, pe the people I get to work with, unbelievable entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. Yep. Um, uh, Everybody goes on Shark Tank to get on QVC. I know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. The, that's that's the right. Ultimate. And you, only, you, you yeah. don't even have to do it. You can just call me. <laughs> exactly. yeah, no. um, but it's been, it's been amazing. <laughs> and, um, you know, now I, um, I run all of our companies here in Memphis and, Congratulations! Thank it's you. It's really a great and, story. You know, we have um, we have a big shipping business where we ship for a lot of people outside of Corky's. Yep. And uh, but the thing met. is, is I'm I mean, we're sitting thirty feet from the original restaurant here. You know, in Memphis, Tennessee. So Causing I'm still jam. very I'm still very <laughs> yeah exactly. And the train will come by in a little bit. I actually had a car accident <laughs> when I was in high school leaving uh -oh. Corky's. Somebody flagged me out to make a left turn. You know, when oh, the traffic you stops fell here, for that. You, I oh, fell yeah. for that trick. And I you're will like, never oh. do it again. Yeah, yeah I'm like, oh, I'm free. I'm like, Rrr. and then it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, the, and, the, and other people are like, I yeah. can't believe they let him out. Corky's is an institution. Well, thank yeah. you. It's it's been it's been a great great ride, unbelievable. So that's that's sort of my um, you know uh, career in a nutshell. I'm gonna just talk through again some highlights. I'm gonna miss a ton of stuff, so don't uh, don't be mad. So you were born in Clarksdale, Mississippi, like we talked yep. about, raised in Memphis, yep. kind of half and half. Graduate of Vanderbilt University with a French literature degree. Very useful. Mm, very useful. I was, yeah. yeah. Um, you lived in Hollywood for 18 years. Yep. I think you're a serial entrepreneur. You've had a great <laughs> career run. Uh, and you wrote at the intersection of technology and entertainment yep. with Celebrity. Okay. Yep. Um, Co-founded a wireless data broadcasting, iBlast. Yep. If you're thinking All back. On the TV station. Um, managed A-list celebrities, social medias, reached more than a billion people. Yep. Um, founded Rever. Did I say it right? Yep. My name backwards is Revelo. Revelo. And so I have Revelo oh. Park, which is my brother's name, Revelo Park. His name is Park, so you can't call it Oliver oh. Crap. Oh. So you know, oh. we have Revelo Park. Revelo Revelo Park. G yeah. oh. My email is Revelo at Gmail. Nice. Rever is a palindrome of my name backwards, so R-E-V-V-E-R. -E oh. Okay. So I was going to ask where that, yeah, the, yeah. that name. I'm like Puff Daddy. That's I'm good. in all the videos. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> you'll just you'll just be all or you'll be O. Just O. Just exactly. O. <laughs> um, you founded Digisend. Yep. That sold to Disney. Correct. You were head of innovation at Disney. I was that. You're that was the, really exciting. You're the man that was credited with spearheading the social media campaign for Toy Story 3. Correct. That was the highest grossing animated movie of all time. And they were scared. Because it had been 11 years since the last movie, since Toy Story 2. And so the kids that were 6, 7, and 8 that loved Toy Story were now in that unreachable kid group of 17, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And Facebook platform had just come along in 2006, 2007. And so we were the first movie to ever market on Facebook. Wow. 
I remember selling 236,000 tickets in one day by putting a uh, gauche painting, which is part of the animation process, Mm -hmm. of Buzz and Woody, arm in arm, with the caption, you've got a friend in me. And it had a ticket link to Tickets Together, No Friend Gets Left Behind, where we could do group selling of theaters. Yeah. And we sold 236,000 tickets with that memory object. And it was the big moment where marketing believed that you tell someone what to do. Right. Like they had a thing that was like, hey kids, here's the new Toy Story 3 poster. Isn't it great? Question mark. Yeah. Don't ever use the rhetorical voice in social media. Sure. Lesson number one. Within five minutes, there people were will tell you 700 why uses do it. of the word, <laughs> of the F word. No, it's not F and great. It's, you ruined my childhood, Dizzy. I hate you. <laughs> I went back to the poster guy. I was like, I don't think they like your three with the black background poster. And he's like, no, 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 no. They don't like your tone. Yeah. They don't like your voice. And he's like, go back, put it back up. And it was like, here's a new Toy Story 3 poster, period. Full stop. Yay, there's a snake in my boot. I can't right. wait. And so I learned a very valuable lesson in that. I mean, what you don't tell people day, what to do. Do not tell people what to do. Right. They do not like to be told what to do. I don't like to be told what to do. Show people something <laughs> new and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like nobody ever, nobody ever calmed down by saying calm down. Right. <laughs> We're going through that You're in my household crazy. right now. After, yeah. crazy. Exactly. What do you mean I'm crazy? <laughs> you want crazy? Now I'm acting crazy. I will be crazy. <laughs> um, Send in the house. That's right. <laughs> so, Disney, then yep. um, you were at the cutting. You're at the, so I'm going to That's why I said always at the, at the technology curve. Yeah. Because I understand fundamentally the power of technology. It's yeah. good and it's bad. I mean, I just grew up in Clarksdale being a gay guy. At six years old, you're like, and I had a computer. My my uh, my uh, godfather, Jay Mullins, gave me a computer with my grandfather that year. You had a choice. You could get a three-wheeler or a TRS-80 Model 4. Oh, I got computer. the three-wheeler. I yeah. got the color computer. Okay. But here we are. Here we yeah, are. Here right we here. Are. Yeah. yeah. Be, drinking some ice picks. That's, That's exactly. Drinking some metal ice mason picks. jars. But it, it, gave, it showed me that there were... There was this tool and then this way, this world outside of where you're physically were. Right. I mean, I had a modem at seven. Wow. And I remember calling into Detroit bulletin board services, the Detroit <laughs> BBS. And you would just have this whole world of people that you could interact with. And it was really just text-based. But, you know, they had games like Zork and text-based games and all these different things that were just, there was this creative platform that existed outside of your confined yeah. local environment. Right. And so the idea of transcending time and place yeah. has just been a magical Which is what social idea, be- which all is what about. the internet is about right. as well. It, True. It is the first moment in time where you can be anywhere at any moment in time on this planet instantly yeah. and share those memories. And, yeah. and in, in AI and machine learning, there's this concept called Amdahl's constant, which is the idea that, that you know, basically processing power, storage, and bandwidth, which is just seeing something, recognizing it, pulling it up in your memory, yeah. is the idea of consciousness. Right. And so the idea that we're all interconnected with these devices in real time, we become this, that's the whole idea of the book I wrote, it's called The Social Organism. Yeah. We kind of become one thing. Right. And, you know, the epitaph of the book. Because everyone's which, connected. Because everyone's in one way or another. connected. So we're kind of building a common brain. Yeah. We're definitely building common memory. I mean, think about when. Absolutely. At Google, what it has become for you as memory or right. as learning. Yeah. Everybody believes there's, they're an, you know, official now because they got the uh-huh. Googles mm-hmm. and they can just be like, I mean, Dr. Google, you know, mm-hmm. how many times have I ended up with mesothelioma? When oh, I got a yeah. cough oh because Dr. Google, because that's yeah. the highest paid search term. Now I'm afraid to Google when I'm sick or, or if, I, oh, if I hurt, I, I'm like, I'm not Googling. My husband I literally know. puts me on phone, 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 <laughs> yeah, called phone detail. I don't, I'm not allowed to so, have the phone. So I'm going to, I'm going to soft sell this. So cutting edge, you were cutting edge and started the world of social influencers. I did. I feel very sad about it. Um, I remember the first girl to ever reach a million people on Instagram was this young lady named Acacia Brindley. Doe-eyed, amazing girl. She was working for a band as their social media person. Uh-huh. But they liked the woman working for the band at <laughs> right. 15, you know, much more than... It, but it also kind of goes to, you can't tell people what to like. No. They chose to they like her. They chose to like her. And that's what's so freeing about platforms like TikTok as well. So, you know, if you look at the evolution, first there was like Live Journal, Friendster, MySpace. That was kind of building social graph. Right. Then you moved into what we call mimetic expression. Instagram did so well because it made everybody a professional photographer. 
Can I tell you something about Instagram? <laughs> and and I think it's still to this day, if you go all the way back through my Instagram. Uh, I was at QVC. I can still picture the room that I was in. Um, have a very visual memory. I don't know timelines, Me but I have a very visual Me memory. Too. I know where I was. Anyway, so and I heard about Instagram, and I went on it, and I thought it was a photo storage site. Right. Like where you kept like Shutterstock or, or yeah, like where you kept your photos. So yeah, my that, my yeah. original photos were photos that I took off my phone because I probably had no memory <laughs> and to put on Instagram because that's where you could keep it and hold it. All right. Oh, I'm oh, still wow. going. Sit down. You know I'm gonna bring this. Uh, oh. but, but before last time we ate here, you know, know there was a shortage know, of this and I was I devastated. Know. So <laughs> so all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say a few more things. So. Then you moved to Iceland. Correct. Um, created a sustainable seafood company called Nice Lend. As nice one play. Does. Nice play. Thank right. you very much. Mm -hmm. um, it is a nice place. It's great. One, uh, this is what you wrote, and I know that it will come up, but it was just so basic. I just put it on here. One second place in Science Fair. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you published, you published the book that you mentioned before, it was in multiple languages, English. Uh, Japanese, Korean. I still don't have the Korean copy. You don't? Yes, so Maybe. Shorter. Oh, Elizabeth. Let's remember. To yeah, I think that you one. find that one uh -huh. um, <laughs> in Bartlett at yeah, the Bartlett at Library. The Bartlett Library. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you wow. have a ten-time platinum. Yep. 10 record platinum. for selfie. Yep. Song with you the chain smoke. Song. Yep. Like let like wait the a minute. First, first, first let me take selfie. a selfie. So yes. so when it, let me jump on. Let's go right back to that. You've worked with clients and and uh, able celebrities, but also big, big Sony Pictures, Turner Broadcasting, yep, Comcast, William Morris Agency. Um, some give you great memories, and I can tell by your face. Some <laughs> you were like, "Yeah, I did." Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I think you're well known uh, art collector, which I really right. want to hear more about. Yeah. Um, founder of Delta Arts District. Correct. Okay. It's uh, a great story. I might get a little emotional after drinking. Uh, this oh, I vodka, hope. But I hope so. It's a great story. I hope so. Um, Logan just grinned because I'm good at that. I'm good at pulling that out. Oh yeah, uh, I can see that. Um, so I mean, then, showman. So then I want to. I don't know. What did I say yesterday? I said I, 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 I like a little attention. I, I'm, a, I'm a peacock sometimes. I'm sometimes. Um, I think we're gonna be so, fast for us. <laughs> so let me. So I'll tell you this, and you didn't know this. You might have picked up on it. So when I first, when I met you, and we only, I mean, we just had dinner. We had lunch. Lunch, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no. you, and all I knew was, one, you skipped a Zoom call meeting. Two, it was. <laughs> Please two, don't say <laughs> two, I pride myself on showing You have up. an Android. I mean, you, you can, it didn't uh, come through. I did this. So, <laughs> so all We're I know is family. somebody, FedEx, connected us. Correct. And yep. to say, oh, well, we might have a third party solution for shipping. Correct. And so, well, I remembered for an e commerce that's going to start up, right? right. So I go into <laughs> it with, with an attitude. And I know, if you can't see me. I have my arms crossed. I'm leaning totally back. And I'm like, <laughs> um, okay, yeah, we can help you out. I usually don't take e commerce business on, but, you know, I, I'll help you out. <laughs> and then you start going into some of these things and you, Worked with Obama. I had no idea you this. worked with Obama. Like you went. You I like did this. So we went to no Iceland idea. with Bjork and and this and <laughs> and, I'm, Bjork, and little by it. little, my arms are coming down, and I'm like, "What? It, this dude, this is like an LA guy." <laughs> and, oh yeah, I worked with this person. This person, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you you saw him one time at the bank ah. in the bank. And so <laughs> anyway, game. so it, it took me probably 20 minutes in that first in that first <laughs> meeting to act to buy in. I was like this. Mm -hmm. I've had many so, people go to the bathroom and then come back. I'm like, oh, you Googled. Yeah, I did, <laughs> but I didn't. And so when I left, I came back over and I'm like, I think I just uh, met one of the most fascinating people. Oh, I've, uh, but I'm like, but he class. could be full shit. I don't know. And so, but anyway. Um, wow. But the cool thing is, is normally I am a researcher before I meet someone because I want to kind of yep. know. Yep. And, you know, but I think with you, it was just perfect because I didn't. That's cool. And so, therefore, I was oh, kind of caught, which, which so it was likewise. very genuine. I did research. It was you a very bit. genuine, which I, which I really liked. I like that very much. You know, that was one of the funny things moving to Iceland. You know, I was just at a career high, uh, had just sold, technically, one, the seventh company that I had started, 
and um and just had a moment in life to take a break and to pause yeah and i when i <clears throat> when i first went to iceland in 2011 i remember just how connected to nature it was how crazy because i mean you literally are being blown over on the side <laughs> of the street with a what's right. called slita this uh, the horizontal ice that's moving towards you <laughs> as one, yeah i mean it, I've, I've, I've actually been blown over in Iceland by the wind. You were literally uh, connected literally, but Yeah, I remember moving into, a, <laughs> yeah, regardless, I've, I've witnessed an object fly across and hit me in the head, you know, 100 wow. meters away in Iceland <laughs> during the, and they're like, oh, it's a little windy. And I'm like, oh, no, this okay. This is very windy. This is a hurricane. <laughs> Actually, when the, when, the, when the wind is 100 miles an hour, I believe that's a hurricane. That's right, okay? this is not windy. It's not a little windy. I'm a little tipsy. I'm like, no, you're face down on my floor. <laughs> You're drunk. You're not tipsy, okay? Oh. Yeah, everything is a little understated there. You know? Oh, that's great. And so, yeah, but um, so so yeah. let me let me tell you, we brought this out. You mentioned just a minute ago. Right. So, again, I think meeting people over a meal is the way. And I, being in the restaurant business my whole life, I feed people. Right. You know, entertain. Hey, try this. Right. You're gonna love it. Right. It's just it just makes people at ease. They call so, that a pusher. Dude, I'm a definitely a pusher. <laughs> definitely a pusher. I want to eat some. Uh, all right, this is a, this is our onion loaf from Corky's. So, okay. so I remember uh, the onion loaf having like in a in a thing. It's stand up. And it had a knife at yeah, the top. You're right. Yeah, it you're was right. Stabbed in the heart. Yeah. So that's what this is. But it. So basically, we have called it onion loaf. It's been on our menu for 35 years, and it is deep. It's not bread. It's onion rings, but they we stack them like a loaf and deep fry them all together. So this was way before the onion blossom or awesome blossom or, or whatever. Yeah, Western made blossom. Right. And um, so, but they're just deep fried onion rings. Did you? Yeah, I did for 28 days. Uh -oh. My parents bet me that I could not, I shouldn't say this, I could not keep a job for 28 days or longer. And they won because <laughs> I realized that like if you give your friends free drinks, they'll give you a bigger tip. Mm -hmm. Turns out I was not they the don't first let person you. to try to do that. They don't that let scam. you work longer than exactly twenty-eight days. Right. That's exactly right. I was fired. I was fired. But you were from popular. Choice. I was super popular. I met the cool kids, <laughs> and uh, and that, <laughs> and then I maybe sold marijuana. But so maybe, maybe, but maybe. from my job at Chili's, uh, it was oh, like a yeah. gateway. Like the because yeah, I met the delivery. guys. Yeah, but yeah, it was exactly. the gateway. Was You're gonna blame me. It's I'm gonna blame Chili's. It's Chili's. It was the awesome blossom at <laughs> Chili's. Was my gateway. <laughs> so into a world of crime. <laughs> so and the reason I did this is yes, you came to Memphis. You know, you, you brought someone with you. Yep. We sit at Corky's and you're like, oh, you got to have the onion loaf. Yep. The waitress looks at me and she's like, first this of all, day. I'm about to. What die. was her name again? She Anita. 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 She's amazing. I knew it. Yeah. And she's, she's awesome. like looking at yep. me like, Jimmy, we like don't, we don't have that. And I'm like, it. what? You know? Yeah. And so anyway, we didn't get to have it. You had talked it up. I wanted to serve it to you. Oh, it's delicious. It's just, you know, sweet onions, battered, so deep fried. Memories. Oh, my gosh. But so that's what food cool. does to me. It's about memories. It's the aroma, the flavor, the taste, the crunch. Um, oh, are you so a good. dipper? I just saw you go into the ranch. I did. Are you a dipper? I'm absolutely a dipper. Like wings? You do wings? Oh, I was talking to Miss Tamil yesterday. We were sitting there having a moment. Tamil is the voice of Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. My dad and Morgan Freeman's Blues Club. And, yep. And... She always calls me extra. She's like, oh, you're so extra. Well, I, why would she say that? But <laughs> I heard that. I, 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 I actually, yeah, I, I realized that it's actually a derogatory term. <laughs> it's like you're extra over the right, mark you're of over the being top. acceptable. Right. Correct. That's like, right. Yeah, and we were talking about our, our tumultuous relationship since October 3rd uh, when my dad got diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. I came home. Um, it was crazy. It's a, this is this is the, the emotional part of mm -hmm. the... Um, so my husband and I were, COVID has been very difficult to be international. Yes. Right. Iceland is an island. Right. And islands locked down. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's already like isolating as it could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's already isolating. So they're just like, look, we got two entry points, right? boats and planes. Yeah. They're on a, you know, so we're going to shut down the border and you better be, you have a reason to be here. Yeah. And we didn't really have a technically great reason except for the fact that we owned a famous home there that was like a museum and right that, that's not really adequate right you're like for, pick during, again during pick pandemic another, pick another exactly. reason pick another reason <laughs> i'm like i can't be like my grandmother's sick you right know, whatever i can't do anything right like 
So we were ha- we were kind of parked out. Um, Niceland had a corporate department in in color in Denver, Colorado. I always wanted the headline uh, to be the the freshest, most sustainable seafood in America was found in the most landlocked place in America, <laughs> Denver, which actually was a Denver right, Post headline. Right. <laughs> I, re- I reverse engineered the story, which is one of my tricks, and um, and I have deep deep love in, uh, for Denver. Actually, there was a company called Moore. Uh, that was like a, a Canadian home shopping channel, similar to QVC, okay. called More Networks that a man named Philip Andrews bought in Nashville. It was based out mm. of Nashville. But regardless, that's part of part of my crazy past. <laughs> um, but uh, but I was in Colorado, and I invited my father out. Uh, my we were looking at a property. Uh, you know, we're big art collectors, right. so we we kind of need a. A weird place. Display. Yeah, yeah, but it's got to be like yeah, where it, two people it, live, yeah. but it's like big open space it's not the kind of thing. It's southern not, it's colonial like, and it, correct, right. correct. That living room does not work room. out no. exactly. That does not work out. And we love people like yourself, and we love entertaining. And, yeah, you know. And so we had bought the Carvo Husith in Iceland, which was the kind of the most famous tragic house. Like the government <laughs> had built this house in 1969 to house their most beloved artist, and he basically. Did not go into the door of the house, went and lived three doors down in a brothel, and said, "You know, screw what, you, government. What? You didn't care about me until I was famous." Oh, and that's a very Icelandic oh. thing to do. It's like, oh, you, you. Oh, so now I'm oh, not now going you love to get, me. Oh, I see. oh, so now what I'm going to do is embarrass you, government. Right. That by refusing time, to by refusing to live in this monstrous, you know, this uh, brutalist architecture concrete fort into the ocean. I'm just going to say no. And it, I mean, there are so many different stories of he. And then here he comes. He defecated on the front porch <laughs> and then left in the taxi. He brought, you know, whatever. He defiled the house. And then and here, comes, house sat and fell here, comes here comes the comes, extra here comes extra Americans. <laughs> hey. We're like, hey, y'all. We're going to take <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was in the you know, front page news. Two LA people buy the Carvel Husith, like, bah! you know, it's like it's a, now suddenly it's a, it's an icon, right? Right? It's in total right. disrepair. Yeah, like there are photos without any of the windows. It's a three story window oh in the gosh. back. Yeah, and it's a, you know, and then suddenly like we become the villains. I'm like, oh, oh, I see, <laughs> because we restored your <laughs> historic we, right. monument and right. actually respected your own culture, and <laughs> that's that's what's so funny is I learned this amazing thing called. And I'm going to slaughter it, and everyone in Iceland that listens to this is uh-huh. laughing at me. But it's the te- basically, it's gestoglokarin, which means the eyes of the guest. Yeah. And so here we are, bright eyed, like super excited, like coming off an all time high. Right. Like I wrote a book, I sold a company, you know, mm-hmm. I'm boom, boom, boom. And we come to Iceland, and speaking of the no Google, they, they do not give a F. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're just like, okay, great, here right. you are. Yeah. Excellent. Who are you know? Right. And, and there's good luck. no pre. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> like that means nothing to me. Right. I actually don't even know who these people are. You, right. to, you keep name dropping, <laughs> but you know we have a vacuum cleaner. We can pick them up behind you if you need to. <laughs> I mean that was kind of the mentality, and it was a really great experience because I'm from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Yeah. And it really was grounding and humanizing. And so, what what I learned just being a hyper creative person is. I'm going to I'm going to look at this environment from a new perspective from yeah. the eyes of the guest. And Iceland was not good at banking. They okay. were in a collapse. <laughs> they had bankrupted the nation. <laughs> no offense bankers in Iceland that I, you know all know me. <laughs> you do not like me. I've called you out many times. We've actually <laughs> we've had litigation. We you know, we've done lots of things together with the bankers in Iceland. The banksters is what we call the them. banksters. And and basically they thought they were the smartest people in the room and they really set the avalanche right. that created the 2008 you know, recession. And so I said, but you're really good at some things. You're really great at sustainable fisheries. Yeah. You're really great at having great clean water. You're really great. Oh, my God, did you know that you're the only country in the world that since the 70s has been completely energy independent? <laughs> that all you do is harness the earth to make energy? Right. Like we're fighting wars about energy. Yeah. And you have unlimited energy. We're fighting wars about water and you have unlimited clean water. Right. We're fighting wars over fisheries by the only way the only war they ever quote fought was the cod wars where the most advanced <laughs> oh, the weapon fish? in Iceland is literally a pair of scissors being dragged a giant pair of scissors being dragged behind a boat to cut <laughs> the fishing lines. 
because they don't believe in military. They okay. don't have a military. Mm-hmm. Iceland does not have a military. Iceland spends none of its money. And so what I learned there, you know, as me coming in from Hollywood onto this cold volcanic island, is I learned to look at it as a guest would look at the theme park, right? And, right. And some people were hypercritical, like, oh, Disney's here to Disney Fi. Right. That was actually part of and I met this woman named Haytha Kristen, Helga daughter. And uh and her partner, Yong Gnar, was basically a a little out there, little on the spectrum comedian. He's got oh. kind of their version of Ricky Gervais. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh and he went on Facebook and me being part of social media and I was one of the largest publishers on Facebook and had worked on political I was working on the Obama campaign at the time. And uh they created a political party called the Best Party. Named after Tina Turner, simply the best, oh. which is something very oh, near and dear yeah. to me. I mean, yeah. my, I remember my mother on the table oh, right. last this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> not, when you, not when you were 10. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. Age inappropriate in every level. And my mom, Kay Turner, whose, whose office is actually right around the corner. Uh-huh. And uh, she's a prominent divorce attorney here in Memphis. They call her the Black Widow. There's a tradition that you pay my mom a dollar, the groomsman does, at the wedding. Just to, <laughs> to make sure you go ahead and put your retainer yeah, in. To put the retainer in, no <laughs> joke. And she's dancing on the table. So, so you know, Tina Turner had always been something important to us. Yeah. And, and so Heather and Yongnar created this thing called, actually the designer of this art is the son, Frosty. Hmm. Um, they created this thing called the Bestie Flokeren, which was the best party. And they ran a political campaign for the first time out of social media. It's the first political party. They won in a landslide. Really? There's a crazy movie on, uh, I think it's on Amazon or Netflix called NAR, G-N-A-R-R. But it's, it's, they document the whole thing because they're just in social media the mm-hmm. whole time. And it's a fascinating story of really one of the first populist movements that happened. Yeah. And it was a precursor to you know all the things that are happening in global politics just using the power of social media and sometimes right. abusing it or sometimes putting memories in people's heads, yeah. all these different things. But it was an, I was in the moment there and, and, and I fell in love with Heather and, and, you know, just as, as an amazing human being. And Yon was such an inspiration because here's a guy who's literally a crazy comedian <laughs> and he's running on a platform and he had this crazy platform called basically the 10 commandments. But mm-hmm. we're gonna bank them thirteen because we always we need have a few, few extras. More. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like we're gonna. It was basically every politician's. He dissected all these politicians and he was just said, "Okay, we're gonna get free swimming, free free towels at the swimming pool. We're gonna build a Disneyland here. We're gonna put penguins like student council and polar bears together. Exactly. I, I'm it's gonna like, get a Coke machine. <laughs> exactly. I I ran on student council actually to get a holiday and won. <laughs> of course yep. you won. Absolutely. I forgot Absolutely. to put that in your bio. What was funny though is that I that was actually Martin Luther King Day. Okay. But I knew that we wouldn't be able to honor that at the school I went to at the time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And so I called it winter break. Okay. And so everybody voted to have winter break. Yeah. It just turned out that it happened to be on the right. day of right. Martin Luther King. Yeah. I. I you know, I, a friend of mine, Andrew Verbis, that actually turned me on to Yopan, getting back to the story, is uh, I, I learned something really interesting from him because, you know, he, he, he had the eyes of the guest when he came to Mississippi when my dad was diagnosed with cancer. But that's a great point in no matter what you're doing, business, personal, right. anywhere you're going, invited to anything, just just having that viewpoint to me it's being open it is it's really a remarkable tool and i you know i get asked all the time about you know um i have i really believe strongly in this word serendipity okay right so in la one of my mentors um was a guy named norman lear is a guy named norman lear he's having his i think it's just his 99th birthday he created good times all in the family Like those the are iconic. I'm aware. Uh, yeah, but that was the first black people on television. Yeah, you know right. that was the first black Americans on television. Yeah, but he was a groundbreaker. Like he had Archie uh-huh. Bunker, the racist character. Right, lay it Mix all it. out. Yeah, you know, lay say it, it all out. Just put it on the table. You know, and and um, and so Norman taught me the word serendipity. Mm-hmm. He says it's the combination basically of luck, karma, and destiny. And he told me, he said, Oliver, when that serendipity opens a door for you, you go through. You go, yeah. 
and you as an entrepreneur. I agree. That we were just doing an interview in the car on the way up here, and they said, you know, what is your tip? I thought I was your only one. No. You are the most yes, important th- one. right now. Look, there are going to be lots of people, There's but lots you're of the people most important. Right now. Yeah, yeah. You're the most important. <laughs> you're adding right now. So, I mean, this could be the biggest interview of my life. It, it might be. But the idea is, if somebody opens a door for you, go through it. Yep. Be open. Yeah. Don't be like, I don't eat barbecue. Right. You Try know? It. It's like, really? Yeah. Have you ever tried it? <laughs> no, I don't eat it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, try it. Then why is that a way to live your life? Like, yeah. You're supposed to be an exploratory creature that's curious, that goes Crossings. through every, exactly. I, I agree. I think that, um, and maybe you'll maybe agree, uh, one of my big things is I like to travel, and I think that travel opens your mind oh, 100%. to different cultures, different types of people, and so I think it makes you more open or willing to accept or willing to try because you're outside of the well, your thing preconceived that, notions are not going to work out. No, uh-uh, <laughs> you're going to end up no. in. And you're going to end up in a bad yeah, place. You kind of ha- have if to you're accept in someone it. else's culture <laughs> and think you're going to change it overnight. You know. So, so you're just talking about, uh, um, you know, trying new things or at barbecue or this. So, what's the what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? You know, it is or, or something you didn't like it's or something. Fermented like that. shark is really oh. weird. Uh, that's actually um, is that Iceland? an Icelandic tradition? Fermented shark. I've had uh, eyeballs uh, mm. in Korea. Uh, that was part of a soup that I had. Um, <laughs> like you knew, like you bit into, like you knew that I they were in there. I actually ate uh, as <laughs> as an enterprising, you know, thirteen year old in science class, which um, <laughs> I I had everyone pay me. I think it was I made a lot of money. It was like twenty bucks a pop to watch me eat. The uh, formaldehyde dog testicle oh, that we're oh, using in oh, science You were that class. guy. I was that guy. You were that guy. Until I realized that I almost died from the poisoning from the, from the <laughs> yeah, formaldehyde. Right. So the kids so don't eat formaldehyde. The 20, the 20, dog the 20 something dollar. Dollar. Please don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so all right you want some more go. onions? You want some more onions? I want some more onions. All right. Come on, Elizabeth. What do we have next? All right, look. Oh, no. I want to eat so, these catfish. Things. I know you do. All right, you know, Ooh. of course, I'm going to serve you catfish. Oh so my gosh, I don't know if you know this, but we're known heart. for barbecue and ribs and 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 is, you know, um, and barbecue pork and all this. This is, but we we've won the best catfish for me? years. And the first of all, I've got two things here. I've got our regular catfish. We've cut up little pieces, but then we also have this spicy hot catfish. So it's sort of a take. You know, when the big thing exploded with the Nashville hot chicken and all that. So we take our catfish wow. and then we toss it in hot sauce, and so it gives it and, and some you know, seasonings and butter. That is a great idea. Oh, I would say thanks, but it, a friend of mine actually was like, "Wow, oh, you could be the first one doing this." I mean, but, that's but it really everyone that's delicious. It, now the spicy chicken sandwich that's the thing, and really, oh my gosh. we are also known for catfish because, um, you know, in the South, I mean, we we love catfish, and but putting that in the batter to me makes it, uh, you know, to the batter for catfish is is what it's all about because the fish is great catfish the, is an incredible it, fish. it is and uh it's high but in when omega you, threes which when, is which is odd for a freshwater fish yeah it's i've been studying as you know a lot about catfish yeah fish. but i love this the hot where we oh, that's good. dipped it you know i mean where we put it in the hot sauce and a little butter and that's a really smart idea i've actually oh. never seen that oh wow i've never seen that Hot it's wing really treatment good, it? catfish. It's delicious. And it's not so hot. Because here's why. I actually prefer the meat texture of catfish yeah. to a chicken. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You're not tugging at it. But, yeah. Right, you know, oh. that whole thing. Yeah. And chicken wings are a very visceral yeah. thing. You got a bone, you got some gristle, you got, you know. Yeah. That's you delicious. Gotta fight with it. Yeah, those are good. So I picked catfish for you. Oh, what a good idea. I and tartar sauce. I love tartar sauce. Oh, good tartar lovely. sauce. And so... So this segment that we just transitioned into, which you you don't really have transitions, you just kind of you just kind of roll with the flow, which is great. I respect structure. Do you? I mean, I'm you, working you, on a house right now. You need a good foundation. You have to. Oh, <laughs> you need walls. I've learned <laughs> people walls and roofs are important. That that's true. That's true. It has to be built good. Yeah. Um. So the main course, I was. I said, that's I said, let's get into the meat of it. This oh. this one will break you down. Yeah. All right. So. This is a question I ask everybody. Sure. Because, again, food 
I think everything revolves around food. And, and even if you don't realize, you have great conversations. You could be at a party, but you know, you're, sure. you're having a drink or you're eating. And to me, family dinners and or Italian families that are on Sundays and they make the gravy and the ravioli sure. and all it just, to me, the, everything revolves around a great meal. So take me to your favorite home cooked meal growing up, whether it was your mom or your grandmother or whoever, what what's, what's that, what's that favorite home cooked uh, meal? So we had a woman who uh, helped raise us. My, yep. Both my parents were working. What was her name? Uh, Rita Lockett. Rita. And our last name is Luckett. Oh, it wow. Was one o, it was, was she Miss Rita? Off. Miss Rita or just no, Rita? Just, just Rita. Just Rita. And she used to make uh, chicken and dumplings. Mm. And like chicken and dumplings, I mean, that were, that are like, you know. Real chicken and dumplings. I mean, really like homemade dumplings uh-huh. and homemade chicken rolled and she, dumplings and yeah. and she really took great pride in it i mean she was our basically our surrogate mom yeah right? you know my yeah. mom was always working late and yeah work, ran late and uh and so she really raised us here in memphis yeah uh, yeah we had a locket and so the chicken and dumplings, chicken I'm, and assu- dumplings I'm assuming she her. she cooked in the broth oh, you know I the mean, chicken the so you, you right could now- actually use like the chicken piece and make like chicken key out you know, yeah you could it was it was a base right thing. for many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But right now you can picture her. You I can, can picture, totally picture. You can I'm looking the on aroma, the, lane, right the aroma yep. that you can smell from oh. a cooking. Like that's the kind of thing I like. Weird. I haven't thought about that in See? thirty. Wow, thirty years or so. Now you kind of want chicken and dumplings. I'm just wanting to find out where she is. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Like, right. Like, I haven't even. You know. It's just you. You know. You have these moments in life where there are hard stops and like you go off That's to right. college it's kind and of and then you look stop. back and you're like what happened to yeah, that yeah, yeah. what happened to yeah. yeah Rita it's funny our our um our like uh babysitter over the weekends or when I would go down to visit my father she used to like take us to the swimming pool or you know do whatever uh, her name was Cindy Shankerman she wrote me on Instagram last night because she saw a post about the mural uh-huh. I mean mind you I have not really stayed more than two nights in Clarkstone, Mississippi for right. 30 years. Right. Okay. Right. And in October, uh, you know, to get to the heart of it, in October, uh, I was living in Colorado and we were looking at, you know, finding a property to move our art collection back right. from Iceland because of the pandemic. And uh, my father came out and my father and I have a really just deep relationship. It always? Not always. It was really when I was 25 and I came out of the closet to him. Yep. And he, he he gave me a great story. Um, he said, he said, you remember my friend Blank? And I said, yeah, yeah. He said, remember when he died of the AIDS epidemic in, in, uh, when you were in college? I said, yeah. I was like, yeah, that was crazy. Remember I took you to his funeral? I was like, yeah. He's like, you know, he was my best friend mm. throughout Hi, I mean, we were born basically weeks apart. You yeah, know, best friend throughout all of our lives. He died with a wife and two kids. Yeah, I never knew he was gay. Hmm. I never knew him as a person. You're my son, and I want to know you. Wow. So wow, that in itself. But that's not what you expected the response. <laughs> oh to be. my god, my friends basically Holy cow. on a road trip from L.A. to New York, uh, like. Pulled off the road, you know. Yeah. I fell asleep in the back of the car because I had been I was the responsible one driving while they were doing whatever. Back then. And back then, exactly. No. I, <laughs> I have a rule, you just never drink alcohol and drive. I agree. Yeah, you ever, I agree. ever, ever. hundred percent. And so uh and so they basically detoured me. I remember going to Mrs. T's Christmas tree farm and just trying to get my dad alone. He was you know, he's he's been mayor. He's he's a mm. polymath like me. He he loves he's curious. He's Wait, a, he's a what? It's called a polymath. It's like that's you're what you just are. really interested in a lot that's of things. That's your syndrome. Like that's your Yeah, I hate that word too know, because applying any word to no, something. I, I mean, I would be I would be ADHD. I'd be, you know, dosed yeah. up like crazy. I love it. I think it's great. I feel I the just same. Had an, you know, I, I love yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so he uh he's just been such an influence. And so he came out to Colorado in October and I was like, Dad, I was like, You don't look well. Like, I'm yeah. no doctor. But you know, I got the Googles. <laughs> but, right. but I was like, you Google just, says. You, Google says, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, he had stage four esoph- he has stage four esophageal mm. cancer. Um, and he's a large did you know, character. Did, did, did he that, know before? No. Oh, he didn't. No, 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 no. You no. said he you don't look Colorado. good. He leaves Colorado. I said, You don't look good. He's like, I'm gonna go do my yearly physical, I promise. Monday uh-huh. morning, Tuesday, I am in a car. 
yeah. driving back to my uh, childhood. Did he know? Did he know? You know your body. He knew something was. I'm up. an avoider. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, yeah. you know, he knew something was up. You know, swallowing was off. Right. There's a lot of heartburn. Yeah. Right. He right. just said law. He, but he's an act. Like my dad, at like age seventy, my dad's like, I'm gonna be an actor. <laughs> I'm like, okay, dad, okay. whatever. I mean, he's opposite Robert De Niro in a movie, right? Like, I'm like coming out. I'm like, okay, you're in 18 movies now? Right. I guess you're acting. I guess you decided. There you go. Like, you yeah, decided I'm like, okay. you're going to be an actor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he puts his heart in things. That's awesome. And, he, and, you know, he's just, he, you know, he taught me a couple of very valuable lessons. But the most important thing he said is, you know, is that if you say you're going to do something, you just follow through. Yep. No matter what pain you have that's why i don't yeah. promise anything after a few cocktails right right, right. i'm like okay that's my yeah. new rule. let me talk to you tomorrow about yeah that. exactly exactly <laughs> sounds good now but sounds great but you know what this is not a commitment mm -hmm. <laughs> as a matter of fact in no way have i expressed that i'm doing this no because i just have a code of ethics or you know everybody loves a lovable character that keeps you on your sure. edge of your seat but that has a set of rules yeah and i have a set of you know i have a set of three rules i'll tell you values yeah that's that's funny because i have that question for you yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, um, but regardless, he, yeah. he, has, he has esophageal cancer. We drive home, you know, this is a manic moment. On the way home, I'm like, What are we gonna do? What's and my happening? husband's looking at me, he's like, This is thrilling and exciting because he's from Memphis, yeah. So it's like, He loves home, he right. loves his family. He, you know, his family is like the kind of quintessential nuclear American family, right? Right, uh, that's like been together, yeah. has, you know. I'm like, I aspire to that, like, that's amazing, right. that's I right, think, you know, we just come from. To I have two divorce parents as divorce right. attorneys as parents. Okay, okay. It's, it, there's nothing subtle about right, that. Right. Just FYI. Okay. Like I remember my mom coming down recently and meeting with my dad, and we walk in, and we're like, we feel. I remember, she's like, "This is a conversation between your father and I." And you're out. Like, and you don't even. And like, you don't even argue. Like, yeah, no, I'm out. There's, no, there's, yeah. there's, I've seen this. I've seen this play before. <laughs> and so it's been, you know, the last. Five months really is crazy. Like I didn't even know Yopon Tea existed. Yeah, five months ago. Right. But what I did is I kind of like having done it in Iceland and having been the outsider so many times, you know, all my life. Mm -hmm. But but going back to Iceland taught me this idea of this endemic strategy. Like what is what is really good about the Delta? What is good about Clarksdale, Mississippi? Yeah. Well, my father and Morgan twenty years ago. In May, you're talking Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman yep. decided to, and they're best friends. Who has a vo who has a better voice than me? He does. He does. He does. Yeah, I have to admit that he does. Face for radio, me, and <laughs> he has. And Morgan Freeman has a better voice. Morgan has. An, it's, it's so crazy it to is. watch people, you know, kind of because he is the voice of God. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah, yeah. It's like I Sam mean, Waters. It's been a trip it, knowing it's just him. Amazing he's, voice. He is such a lovely, thoughtful human being, uh -huh. though, and I'm just so happy. That, that dad and he have each other as friends because those are unlikely friendships, you know, oh, those are unlikely absolutely. friendships. And, and, and they just, it's been a real inspiration what they've done. And so they basically 20 years ago, uh, Morgan wrote me a note telling me the, the kind of longer story of it recently, but you know, they, they, it was like a summer day and it was, you know, he just, the way right. Morgan talks, he writes, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, and he said, you know, your father and I agreed upon, doing something with this town that has a lot of terrible history. Yeah. And right? but do you read I have to do you sure. read his note in his voice? Of course. Of course. Okay, go ahead. I mean, it's in your head. You can't <laughs> you can't not. You're like, do wait, that. I got to yeah. read that again. Yeah, I got to yeah, read exactly. that again. Exactly. It's not yeah, it's not, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, a trip. It is a trip. But he said, you know, your dad and I decided to do something about it. And so Cultural tourism, culture in, in, in our hometown of Clarksdale, Mississippi, where the home of the blues is. Yeah. I, I didn't know that right. as a high school student or elementary school. They had just whitewashed it. Yeah. And I'm not making anything political. No, no, no. White, whitewashing as a term. Meaning sure. Like, it just didn't exist it's anymore. Just, right. And, and, and so. It wasn't you, what it was known for. It, it was just. Wasn't, no. It was just a it town. Just was, it was right. just a town that was dying in the Delta because yeah. agricultural shifts had changed. Yeah. And, Cotton was now being made in India and China and right. this and everybody everybody was at fault. Yeah, of except course. Except for the people right there. Yeah. Right. That's a very common thing I find in decaying places. Right. Is that it's everybody else's Somebody fault. Somebody else's but fault. But mine. Mm. And and I learned a very valuable mm. lesson from a gentleman named Kevin Sujahara 
at, at I had an unbelievable opportunity after Digiston at Warner. I mean, before Digiston, during Digiston at Warner Brothers, and Kevin Sujahara, who was I think one of the first Asian American studio heads. Yeah, I respect him tremendously. Uh, he. he after about three weeks of me being there, you know, I was like the internet kid and I was coming up with all these problems. And he looked at me, he's just like, the next time you come into this office with another problem, it's done. You better have but a solution. But you come in with a solution and here's a check. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And so it really taught me. So wait, me, how old were you then? I was 20, four or five. I think maybe? we probably figured that out about the same time. Yeah. But I don't think everyone figures that out. Yeah. I think sometimes people don't ever. No, they don't ever figure out. it out. I think oh, I'm in these that, Facebook groups because Facebook but, groups are but, now the media of small but towns. But don't you think that some people think that that their contribution is the problem? Like they're uh, acknowledging they're the lazy. problem or I, saying I, this I, is I the just, problem. I, is I don't that, want to start a few no, after know. this. No, but, I know. But, but you know, I, media I do has think, moved to Facebook groups. Okay. Yeah. Clarkson, Mississippi is run by three Facebook groups. <laughs> I'm in each of them. Right. Okay. And I'm just there being the protagonist. It's like, I am back. I am sharing what I'm doing. I'm bringing new life. I'm bringing art. I'm yeah. bringing culture. I'm bringing the values that I have. Right. Take it or leave it. Yeah. But I'm making it happen. Yeah. You're not doing anything but complaining. Yeah. So. What someone else did. So, and, and I learned a great, Niall Shafi, who's this Egyptian man who, um, who he and I built the first voice over the internet and it worked together in, in 97 for uh, Quest Communications. He said, Oliver, he's like, I don't want to do his voice because I don't want to appropriate, but <laughs> Oliver, he was, a lot of times he's like, bad Oliver, bad, right. as if I was a dog because everybody has a dog <laughs> named Oliver. But but he said, Oliver, as the caravan moves, the dogs will bark. Mm -hmm. And I've had that all my life. As the caravan moves, the dogs will bark. It's true. And what I've found is, is that we are at this fundamental moment in American society right now. It's so cool to be back from Iceland Right. So cool to be back in the heart of a lot of bad stuff. Like, so I was yeah. saying an endemic strategy. I brought Devin Liston, who did the mural, right? He came back and he's like, Woo. He's like, I'm not so sure I want to scratch the historical surface of Clarkston of that yeah. much. Yeah. Like, oh, let's keep it on the surface. This person was lynched here right. 12 miles away. Right. Like, right. Rrr, rrr. so it wasn't necessarily the history yeah. so much of what had happened there. It, what it was, what it is, is what is the most valuable thing in this community and this nature. And Clarksdale, Mississippi has an underlying deep connection to the nature, right? Uh -huh. It's a grayer the land. The, the land, land is flat. Yeah. It's an alluvian floodplain. The yep. river is a force. You know, tornado storms are yeah. a force. Growing your crop every year is a force. All of those things are really what correlated to Iceland, really tied to nature. Right? Okay. It's either being blown away oh, yeah. in a hurricane right. or being blown yeah, away in a tornado. This a hurricane and yeah, tornado. Exactly. <laughs> and so so it's like, oh well there's a similarity. So nature is really a part of this. And yeah. people hunt and fish and right. I grew up, you know, with with a with access to a property that my dad is part of that was like, you know, a nature preserve kind that's of hunting right. thing. Yeah. Hunting, hunting camp, you know, yeah. whatever. And I, I mean that's where I spent my childhood. Like right. Like pulling the kudzu know. and yeah. swinging off vines, and, you know. Yes. Which, by the way, kudzu flowers make purple honey. Okay. Kudzu flowers either taste like grape or apple to people. We're going to start cultivating kudzu, but I'll oh, tell you about oh, that in a minute. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And Don't so, let it take and so over. the idea is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember the kudzu festival, Let Your Imagination Run Wild. Wow. Yeah, 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 here in Memphis. Wow. At the myth at the Mississippi at Memphis Library. Okay. There was the Kudzu Festival. I always thought it was a funny play on words, you know. <laughs> Let your imagination run wild. Yeah. But so so we basically came back and there were three main things that, that we found. Number one is dad and Morgan found that the blues were really from there, that the crossroads was really right. in our hometown. Yeah, the muddy that. waters and Mississippi John Hurt and Rick Ross and Nate Dog and Sam Cook and yeah. Ike Turner was the elevator operator at the Alcazar Hotel while right. W while Elvis came to do WROX and yeah. inspired, you know. Right. This was real. This yeah. was ground zero for the but you know what? There was a thing called the Great Migration. Six million Americans left the South. Okay. During Jim Crow. Yeah. And yeah. Why would you yeah. stay? Right. I mean, come on. Right. Give me a break. Right. Like, I'm going to Detroit. Right. I'm going, I mean, give me a, get <laughs> out of here as fast as possible. Right. I'm going to take the railroad north and, like, and the crossroads, you know, being that epicenter, being yeah. that, that, that gravitational sort, 
you know, I, I have my own version of it. It's a, it's lore, of course. I have my own version of it. That was where cotton that was gotten by ill-gotten gains of slavery right. was monetized. Yeah. That was the heart. Like, Ground Zero, the Blues Club, is literally in an old cotton depot at the railroad track, the Yellow Dog Railroad, yep. where the, the, the rich planner class. Right. And I'm living this history right now because I'm deep in you're, it. You're back in it. And I'm deep in it, and I'm trying to really fundamentally understand how you make a solution out of this. Right. Because you're me, not coming with a problem. I am not coming with a problem. Right. My problem is my father's health. Uh -huh. And luckily, we have found some amazing solutions like targeted chemotherapy, like, you know, uh, he's doing a new molecular, uh, or um, I think it's called like nano radiation or molecular radiation. But because, right but let me ask you this yep. because of this cancer, yep. it brought you back to Clarksdale the only to work reason. on, but to work. On the only reason. bringing, and I don't want to say bring it. It's not bringing it back. It's it's putting new ideas, new into ideas the system for but, economic. But that wouldn't have happened, of course not. But that's serendipity. Yeah, it's just it is what it is. I'm gonna make the best of it. Yeah, and and I'm gonna bring the brightest minds around me. Yeah, like Brian, who you know, who's sitting in the, in the corner over there. <laughs> he's you know, eating by the way. Yeah. He's he's behind you, oh, and every every time I look over, he's like. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. You got to get some of this catfish, bro. Dude, you got to taste this You got to. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. It's, this is a great so, idea. So one of my questions I had for you, and you just mentioned it, you know, surround yourself with great people because I think that's super important. What you've, you've built, started, and sold seven companies. Correct. In the entertainment space, in the media space, and, and all that. Never you, in you the have, food space. You <laughs> no. You have a science mind, right? Literature background. Sure. So how do you find great people to surround yourself with? And I want to know, <laughs> let me tell you this, and this is weird, and I wrote the, and I put this down, it's funny that you brought it up. What do you tell them? How do you motivate them to keep up with you and, and live your vision? Ooh. Like, I know I'm a seller. I can sell. Can I, I, I can I use wanna, my phone in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I, tell, can I call a friend? Yeah, call a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to call Hayden in Iceland. And be like, hey, hey, though, <laughs> she's become kind of my translator. Okay. Like, like when, when Brian and I were stuck on a on a business term between each other, like how uh -huh. we're working together, I had to call in Hey, though, and she's just like, okay, here's here's my synopsis of how Oliver <laughs> operates. <laughs> I tell this to him just so he knows that right. he's aware of it. Yeah, know how because, I am. You know, first. I I don't know. I I have this set of rules. Yeah. That I live by. That are kind of like these are the things that are going to keep me out of trouble. Yep. But the rest of it, I don't know the answers to. And, and, and you know, and, and Ari Emanuel influenced me in saying fair is where we end up, for instance. Yeah. You know, like here's the negotiation. I mean, he's the Ari from Entourage. Sure. That, you know, he's the real yeah. life character. And um, I've just had all these amazing, and, and I, you know, in retro, you know, I'm only 47. I'm like looking back and, you know, just yeah. all these different elements. But of if your somebody life. else was 25, and they're going, I want to surround myself with yep. good people. I want yep. to sound, surround myself yourself. with inspirational people. Be good yourself. Okay. Be good Be yourself. Good yourself. Do, you know, I, and they will, that's and why they my follow you. And I'll then they start to come in. Yeah. Just, to, just, to, just to show you. Yeah. Number one is, you don't do something another person doesn't want to do. Whether it's sex, marriage, yeah. life, money, uh -huh. business, it's never going to work out. Don't talk them into it never going to work out that's interesting because that's the social if you think about the social media part of don't course. tell someone what, what they want to do yeah just don't do it yeah because it never works out yeah don't impose yourself yeah upon another people mm. do not use your that's beliefs a good rule. don't impose yourself on another person yeah what, whatever it is and it's fundamental it's like look there's coercion there's there's yeah. sales manipulations there's yeah. you know that's there's right. all those things that are useful tools sure but those are tools. Yeah. This is a way of fundamentally being. Mm -hmm. The second thing is understand, have empathy. And and empathy is such an Empathy's, overused, ununderstood word right now. It's hard, I think, for a lot of people to have empathy. They don't have the capability of having empathy. Explain it in your in your own mind. Empathy is the ability to, you know, I always say put yourself in another person's shoes. Empathy is the ability to walk into a room being just as insecure as anyone else mm -hmm. and smile. Yeah. That's all it takes. That was like my biggest trick in Hollywood. I was like a chubby, introverted, 
you know, kid going to LA with all these beautiful people, everybody's, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, I just walk in a room and smile and be, you get this and yeah. be yourself and charming. Yeah. And I'd be like, it's I'm, hard. I mean, my entire career started by getting almost hit by a cab and going, well, I'm just a dumb kid from Mississippi. And the woman's like, what, Mississippi, where? <laughs> and I'm like, Clarksdale. She's like, oh my God, you don't even believe this. My parents are the birds. Oh my God, I spent my childhood there. That's how I got my first no job way. in Silicon Valley was with Ann Passerin, Birdsong, who, the, I just met her aunt the other day. <laughs> literally, literally, that's how I got my career start. Out of Vanderbilt. Goes, Do you know how to code? I went to visit my friend. So, tell me you uh, said yes. Kind of. of course I did. You said yes. French, you, Are you French kidding literature me? code? Of course. <laughs> I had computers. And yeah. at that time, if yeah. you knew how to turn one on, you could right. code. I'm going like, to find out. I'm and I, my encyclopedia. Mean, I, I got a job the next week making $78 an hour, working 100 hours a week at Montgomery Securities Bank in the Transamerica building. And then I'm with all these kids that had gone through like the, the, the pattern of like, I went to an Ivy League school and my parents right. got me in and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now I'm an analyst at a bank and I'm like... Great. I love your Ivy League education. Oh, I mean, I went to a nice school. I'm not going to pretend yeah, like of I, course. I was funny. I, in an article in the New York Times, I said, yeah, I was born in a cotton field, and my mom sends me this <laughs> thing of cotton to my house in Iceland. And she's like, oh, it was really hard for you, yeah, wasn't so it, hard. son? Yeah. Oh, it was so hard for you. <laughs> so, so hard. I'm not going to pretend. That, yeah, she Remember those chicken and dumplings? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but but you know, I came back home and I and I came back home and, and my dad, you know, I want to carry on his legacy. Yeah. And and he's always stayed there. He he made a conscious decision to stay there and to improve the place. And yeah. he has built a, you know, great housing for people. He's helped with Teach for America. He has brought businesses there. He brought cultural Which tourism is, there. Well, cultural Last tourism year, to me, that's 40, what 6,000 European people went through that town. Of Clarksdale, Mississippi. Of Clarksdale, Mississippi. It is more famous to Europeans mm. than it is. And this is all part of like I think it's the coolest little got. place. And I love, I mean, and you, that's I love little bonded. places. You sent me a photo of the couch I was I, sitting on yeah. when I talked to you. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, let me talk. So, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. So, I told you I take some pictures and I usually... You're quite talented. I frame them and I'll sign them. I'll sign them. But it, it has to, I mean, there's 30,000 pictures on my phone and I might have, you know, a hundred that I want. But and you upload so them I, on So I brought, so I had this picture done. I brought the frame. I signed the frame. I named the picture for you today. And they cut the photograph the wrong size. So I have an empty frame. That. and I with nothing. That. But it is the picture that I snapped when yep. we were down there in front of Ground Zero. And I was really getting a picture in front of this piggy barbecue grill yep. outside. And you know the pig, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, of course, me being a barbecue, I'm like, oh, I've got, you've got to take a picture of me in front of this. Oh, I'm opening it up. It's it. smoking. They had some shoulders out there. And then what, I, what really fascinated me, and I loved it, I loved it, is it was a woman pit master. Yep. I mean, yep. I, it's just you don't see that. I love that. Even though but I that's have, my dad. I mean, my but that's dad, so great. You know, and so she just, walked out there. She opened those pits up, and of course, you know, I'm just like, oh, you know, looking like this, like, oh, you know, I'm seeing she's poking it. He's old, like, do you old know school. who I am? Yeah, she's not. No, 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 I don't do that. And so she, I'd much rather be introduced. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is. <laughs> and so, um, you know, she's not putting Elizabeth, a thermometer. Come over here. <laughs> exactly. She's not putting in her thermometer and checking the temp and oh, seeing boy. the sun. She, you know, she's poking it just like I know how to do barbecue. And she she plopped down on this old couch out front of Ground Zero, it, it, you know, in Clarksdale, and she lit up a cigarette and sat there. Uh. And I just turned and snapped this picture, and she didn't see me. And it's it's it wasn't really about her; it's more about the moment. How cool is this? Yep. And she's just you know laid back on this couch and in Clarksdale, and she's she's the woman pitmaster, or you don't even say pitmaster. She's cooking some barbecue out there on this piggy shaped I mean, barbecue the whole ritual, smoker. You know, this thing about the ritual of barbecue. Oh, it is a it's ritual. It's a ritual. Absolutely. It's a ritual. Absolutely. It really is. And, you know, it's, oh, well, well yeah. that's a digression because, you know, I'm learning right now being here, like how it's just cool to come back with the eyes of the guests. A different, yeah. And just, and just respecting it and loving it instead of being like, that's a problem. Right. Like you she go. didn't use a thermometer, right? And, and you're, you're like, like, oh, that's well, maybe cool. Maybe she doesn't need th- 
you know what? Maybe she didn't. Yeah. Karen, maybe she didn't need it. That's mom. right. And okay. I bet she can cook some Why chicken and dumplings. Why don't you go back to Google? Woo. I bet exactly. Why don't you go back to Google and use that TikTok recipe? That's, that's right. That's and then right. we'll make some feta pasta. You know, who? What inspires you? People that are you inspire me. People, uh, you know why? That's because to me the biggest compliment that someone can give. You me. inspire me because. Thank you. It's don't likewise. get sent. Don't let likewise. me get sent. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. No. All right. People that are just doing themselves. Yeah. Like you do mm-hmm. you. You mm-hmm. know. Um, I'll get emotional. I'm gonna tell. All right. But so before you do, I'll I'll finish. And he I'll, said, I'll, he said, I'll, Oliver. He's like, you need to put on your big boy pants. <laughs> you be you. Like he was <laughs> like he was just was crazy character. He's no longer with us. He had tried to. Those get, are. But my favorite um, are the characters. Yeah. But I'm Michael like, Fian was his name, and I and we worked on Stevie Oki together worldwide. Stevie Oki is is Benny Hanna's son, you know, oh. coming from the restaurant business, and he had such an incredible work ethic. There's a movie I'm in called "I'll Sleep When I'm Dead." Yeah, and uh, and it's about Stevie Oki and his father's relationship with uh, Rocky Oki. Uh, Stevie Oki was the highest touring. I remember giving we were there giving him the Guinness Book of World Records at a nightclub in in L. A. Uh, for 311 performances that year. Wow. I remember <laughs> I remember being with him flying backwards in time to perform twice a night. Mm, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, he did three New Year's Eve shows. He told you to put your big boy pants One on. One year. Michael Thien, his European manager, who was very dear to us, uh, just, you know, one of those friends on the road that you yeah. have who was just so sweet and dear. I remember, I remember being in Miami going to Winter Music Conference. I love music. I, love, I just love yeah. music. And I was with him at Coachella. Well, I was with him at Miami, then Coachella, then Scott and I were like, uh, we got to get out of town. And we, we were going to go to this place called Harbor Island that I remember going to as a kid. I'm going to take my, you know, at the time, boyfriend there. And we're just going to just decompress before we start the audience. So yeah. This is between Disney and the audience. The audience is one of the other the companies. The audience the company that I just- A big company. The last that you, company. Yeah. It's a very big company that Ari Emanuel and Sean Parker and I founded. And I ended up running. Um, what a what a crazy experience that was. But regardless, I was walking down the beach in this pink sand beach, and I, oi, oi, Oliver, oi, and this is like <laughs> the only other two people on this island. It's Michael Thea. Wow. <laughs> and, and his girlfriend at the time. <laughs> and so, Farah, and so. Um, <laughs> So Michael and I just became fast friends. He passed away recently. He had mm. an accident in Running Canyon of all places, walking oh his dog uh, 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 and uh. fell and hit his head wow. on oh the dog. Gosh. And it's like, you just don't know it's how ephemeral That's life right. is. That's right. And it's like, here's the guy that said like, you know, you got to be you. Yeah. You know? And it's like, and it makes sense. And so it? my moment like that, and I'll tell yeah. you, one of my best friends, you know, because everyone has, you know, oh, I don't know if I'm good at that, or, right? Or, or I'm different, or and everyone thinks the same thing. Everyone he, thinks the same thing. I know, and he, and he told me this, and it never, it never goes away. It stays in the back of my head. And he goes, "Own your shit. Own your shit." Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and and I say- and I love it. And so every every once in a while, if I'm doing something or going into something new that I'm not, I'm a little, I'm I don't feel that maybe I'm as good as this person. Then rule I go, one, you know what? Don't impose yourself. On your rule shit. number two, <laughs> be empathetic. And the third yeah. rule, which ties this back so well, we should do a show together. Uh, I think we are. Is be is yourself, what is? is what Daniel Lismore taught me. Be yourself because everybody else is taken. Yeah. So if yeah, you try to true. be somebody else, they're already taken. Right. They're going to be a better version of them than you then, are going to be of them. Yes. So why don't you be yourself yep. instead of trying to be everybody else? Yep. And that is to me the most fundamental thing because the Delta they breed crazy, you know. They go crazy that's on the That's what front I love about the South with sweet tea. I love it. They put it on the front porch with sweet tea. <laughs> I love you it. Know, now it will be Yopon tea because it doesn't have tannin, so it's that's sweeter right. naturally. Oh, so look how he did. See how he weaved that in. That was seven. nice. That yeah. was nice. It's not a hard sell. Tea. It's just a, oh, by the way. I, I like. So I said said. that when you said, um, ins- I inspired you. I don't know about that. No, but I appreciate I'm the uh, the compliment. What's one of the best compliments you you've gotten? Today, Today. I got a, I got a, you know, my friend Winter uh, <laughs> commented on Facebook as I was driving up here doing seven things at once with auto drive on. Uh huh. Thank you, Volvo. Right. The car I bought. You know why I bought the car? Because <laughs> no human being has died in the car. 
Wow. In that model car ever. Wow. And I'm just a safety first person because nothing else around me is safe or sane. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you if need I can all the help you can get. I need all the help I can get. Thank you, Volvo. Uh, it's not a paid endorsement. <laughs> you know? And, and it's knock on wood. Here. Knock on wood. <laughs> you're, you're driving, Brian. Uh, no, but uh, wait, I forgot what I was saying. What were you asking? self uh, uh, um Oh, the best compliment. compliment. Yeah. So my friend Winter in LA commented and she showed, she had this amazing photo of uh, Tina Turner. Uh, going back to Hello, Tina, Tina Turner. Turner yeah. I, I actually show you the photo when I load my phone. It's this incredible your, photo of her Android? Like, in the lower left hand corner. On your corner. Android? Well, I turned off my phone to respect oh, gotcha. you know, okay. everyone here. Okay, good. Because uh, it's blowing up. you know. With green texts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> people hate you know? yeah i know people I hate know. although when you showed me and it flipped open and the oh no screen, I mean, I was yeah blown it's away. the future and probably. i was kind of like mm, yeah I don't know. no Maybe. the galaxy z flip okay. is incredible fun right. I'm, and i'm not also not paid i used to be paid by them but I'm not <laughs> uh, samsung if you're hearing me a lot of uh, a lot of uh yeah i'm back in america there's disclaimers and lilia here. at customs is not going to threaten to throw your phones into the ocean <laughs> I, I will receive them now. No, I had it in my sp Samsung sponsorship. But, no, I said, but but regardless, amazing image of Tina Turner. And uh, people were commenting on it. You know, she's a, a successful woman in Hollywood. And, uh, and she commented on me and she said, I want to thank my mom and Oliver Luckett for influencing me because he started my first art collection. And the idea that I can influence people through the art that I have collected and the people I've collected around yeah. me, not as objects, but as, you know, I hate that word, collecting yeah, people, yeah. but the people that I've brought together, right. you know, that, that, uh, that, that we build things together. Right. You know, it's funny. I have 18 people have come to Clarksdale, 19 people have come to Clarksdale. No, more than that. Probably 25 people <clears throat> have come to Clarksdale since November. Yeah. Since dad's illness. Uh, Dad is doing very well, by good, the way. Good, He's doing very well. He will be there if you come down to, you know, during Jute Joint. By the way, they have dogs that are being ridden by monkeys that I learned about. Well, I, I've never been to Jute Joint because I've worked oh. at Coachella every year. I've been to 26 Coachella, so, I've, so uh, it's always been this weekend. So you didn't, so you, I've never Coachella's on festival. here, and I just have it as one word. Because when we first met, and you were blowing through all these names, right. and Obama, and this, and, and uh, seven companies, and... I was glazed over, and and then you said, you know, Coachella, and I'm like, wait, what? And then, yeah, have you been to Coachella? No, no, oh, no, well, I no. Could easily uh, have been to Coachella. Yeah. Well, so you know what? You'll be my guest uh, next. All right. So tell me. Coachella. So tell me what. So besides these, you know, um, not technology, Norman social gave media me my first companies to Coachella. Yeah. You know, I grew up in in a, in, in Memphis. You know. Right. And. It was it was a little us versus them. It was a little like this is our yeah. I know, you know the school you people. went to. Yeah. I know the school you went to exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, there is now the Luck at Gwen little art area. Oh, where we 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 basically everybody kept hit, hit, hitting me up for money for football helmets, and I was right. like, well, I I don't feel true <laughs> paying for thing. the guys that beat me up all the time. So <laughs> I don't want to continue that and giving them padding to right. do so. You know, I don't have the helmet to do so. I don't know if I want to do that anymore, but. What I said is, but I will happily give money to the school if you, and I worked with um, uh, with a very smart guy there, and, and I said, you know, if you uh, put an artist on campus painting a mm. painting, mm. I will donate the artist, the time, the materials, and the painting. Yeah. And so now we have an entire hallway really? of paintings wow. that we've donated over the, over the last Ten years or so, wow. uh, called the Luckett Gwen uh, Artist in Residence Program, which I'm so proud of. Of course, and and, and the greatest, <laughs> I'm telling you, you can art is one of the only things visual art, music that can change and open people's minds when they don't know that their minds are being changed and opened. Yeah, it's just such a powerful medium. It's so intrinsic. Why do you think that is? It's pattern recognition. You think? It's visual patterns. It's See, just, I think it's, it's so, the story. So I think to me, it's like, the story. I keep story. looking at this image right here. Uh huh. That's just awesome that Frosty Nar did. Uh huh. Uh, and I just keep seeing this because it's almost that symbol of power. Yeah. But the hand's a little chubby. The, That's it's right. It's a little off color. That's right. It oh, almost, you relate to it. I relate to it. Exactly. Not calling you. you know, no, I, I get yeah. it. Look. Hey, own it. Own your. 
Yeah, I mean, I like a, art. I like all different kinds I mean, of art. You like art. Um, there's some down there that I really like but, well, on the other part of that chair. Well, behind this chair. Oh yeah. Um, like street art, but, but well, I that's also fair. that's fair. Yo, but, but I also that looks like a caliph, like a um, uh, like muddy water. I have muddy waters over there. I think, don't I? Yeah. Um, but I like art. Do you know how hard it but, is like, to with, make art? But I like with the story. Where I got it doesn't necessarily have to be the artist or what the pic, it's it's more the story where I found it why yep. why I liked it this where I a, was you know the the Wall Street Journal just did a piece on our house in Iceland and my husband was the main protagonist because he really <laughs> is the guy that like has the patience to place yeah. we had two thousand two hundred pieces of art on the walls oh my house, gosh okay I mean this is this is not trivial but so how but how did you start getting into collecting art my dad. My dad had a guy named Thomas Ellaby living in our back house, and he he has unfortunately died of a of a of an overdose slash, you know, he was just a troubled yeah. artist, and in the traditional sense, and or in the tragic sense, and his ability to do pencil drawings is just mm. unbelievable. Like we have mm -hmm. most of the Thomas Ellabys that are that are around. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just something so magical to see somebody pick up a pencil and do something in front of you. And I would just be in awe. I would just go and like hide and watch him, right. you know, do his art in our guest house. Yeah. When I would visit on the weekends. And, and he was just so cool and just such an influence in my life. You know, he died way too young. But just to, to be able to take a, a, a piece of pencil and to build an image like that. And so like that mural I showed you. Yeah. You pull it open real quick. I'll show you. That is that is Devin Liston got on a boom lift. By the way, that that is a this fifty is, foot tall, you know, wall. Right, this right. It's the wall of the whole it's building. Giant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He did this by hand. He spray paints it by hand. Yeah. There's no. There, I mean, some, I don't know. He just how goes people. on a boom lift and he backs up, and I would just remember seeing the boom lift going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, yeah. back and forth. And he would just back up, and they would just paint. And uh, to be able to do that, you that can scale, see it in his head. That's yeah. Size, that's taller than a human man. Right. 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 A, like, look at the scale. Yeah. And art, you know, is about precision and scale. Yeah. Right. And so to to work with people like Devin and to see art come alive like this is just is is phenomenal. I'm really excited. Last night, that's why I was watching. So what what are you with we with artists? What are what are you drawn to? Uh, I've, read, to... I've read, because I've I'd had to research this time, right? Um, that you you're sort of drawn to artists, and not not locals, not the right word, but up and coming or sure. So the, the people I like don't giving know. people their first opportunity. Okay, that's I what like, I, I like. I you know why I do you really why like, do you think that is? Because I think you get so much more out of people. You know, I could easily, you could easily berate people all day long. Right. You're smarter than the average bear. You get it. Yep. You know, you could cut them to the quick if you needed yep. to. But to elevate somebody, and to be like, you know, I learned it. I learned it by throwing my phone at a at an unfortunate person at a Denver airport when I was stressed out as hell in like 1999 when I was building the uh, Voice of IP Network at Quest and it was Christmas mm -hmm. and the woman's like, you know, the, the famous, the gates closing. And I'm like, but right. I'm looking at the plane. Stop it. It says delayed. Yeah. There's the door. Right. Let me in. And yeah. I threw my cell phone and was detained. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> it's not a proud moment. Right. But there was a moment of inversion there where I realized I was like, you know what? If I had allowed her to be a hero. Yeah. It would have worked. Right. And so now my whole thing is like, not to give it away, but I'm like, you, you, Mr. Lowe's employee, yeah. you're going to save my life today. Right. You're going to be my hero. Well, everyone likes, And, and yeah. everybody res resonates with that. And yeah. so I watch all these people mimicking behavior, thinking that they're a famous, you know, acting cool, you know, all this right. shit. It's like, that never gets anybody anywhere. It does not. Except in TMZ. Right. Okay. Right. Just for a FYI. split second, and then it's gone. For, exactly for that yeah. moment, and then you're gone. But not there's a negative patina on you, Absolutely. and everybody can search it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think people understand that they're building reputation. Right. Right. And you know, growing up in the South, reputation is, is a big deal because you got to cover up what you did last that's, weekend. That's right. That's you right. Like, don't embarrass. Don't me. embarrass. <laughs> do not embarrass me. Exactly. 
Uh, we will get when we get home. That's, you that's will right. Receive, you will know. <laughs> you will know how angry I am at you. But at Goldsmiths, that's you right. hold my hand and you shut up. That's okay? right. <laughs> you are not going to embarrass me. Um, so I, you cheer for the underdog. Absolutely. And artists, I mean, that's probably the ultimate Look, underdogs, I mean, the right? The thing is, is people are like, "Oh my God, that gives me so much pleasure. This is amazing. This is yeah. my favorite piece of art." Yeah. Can I get ten dollars? But do you think? Wait, that, no. Give me five. Yeah. Give it to me for five. Right. It's like, and so I try to teach artists their worth. Yeah. In money terms. Right. Right. And mind you, you're talking to a person, you know, who got fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin paid to them by the foundation. You know, when it was two hundred dollars, and I went and cashed it in and paid my taxes. Right. So like, not all my advice is great right, advice. Right. Right. Because that's two hundred and fifty million dollars that I do not have right now. That's burning a hole in me. <laughs> You know, as Bitcoin hit sixty thousand. I'm like, Rrr. but you're, but it just didn't feel right. But your me, mindset's you know? right. Exactly. You, you you want the underdog to win. I yep. love, and I've yep. and I've kind of always been this been this way in business and and everyone that's worked for me. And I've I've had a crazy career where everyone that works for me now, I always say I used with to work me. for a lot of yeah. That's I right. Say works but with but me, yeah. I worked for them so that's an interesting position yeah, to be in it is interesting um is but interesting. i'm grateful and they taught me so much and i'm always genuinely excited for their advancement so if they have an opportunity yep. to move forward i, I and it's not it. a play i am it's excited just, because I'm it happened to me genuinely excited it to see to people succeed and i want to be that path for people yeah and you know talking about underdog just to pull it back full full frame so in november Andrew Verbus, uh, who runs Pacha Soap, who's one of these kind of like amazing characters. He's 30 years old. I almost shit the pants when he was, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> he's the Pacha Soap at Whole Foods. Okay. And, and he's just a quirky, funny guy. And he comes to visit. We've only met one time, by the way, yeah. looking at the property. I went to the home opening mm -hmm. of the property with him. He was visiting me, and I said, we're going on a field trip with Shaylin and Andrew and Hather. They're all right. in town because, you know, we're working on DigiFresh together uh, for the launch of their essential oil line called yeah. Soli at, at Whole Foods. And we go up to this, this, this estate in Colorado that we're looking at buying, and it's just a surreal experience that we have together. And then that was the next week my dad comes up to look at the same property, to, for me to get the dad stamp. Right. And I'm like, that's when this all happened. So here right. we are, there's, we're playing it. And so Andrew's like, look, buddy, I want to just come to Clarksdale now and see what's going on. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's really generous and kind of you. Like, absolutely. Right. So so one of my dad's friends picks him up on the way. He was flying from Santa Fe privately, and he picks him up on the way in Nebraska, and he brings him there. And I'm like, well, hello, sir. I've met you twice. It's like, <laughs> right. hello, right. Andrew. And he's like, hey, have you ever heard of this plant called Yopon? By the way, I think that you have like 12 of them in your dad's yard. Yeah, so tell me about this. And I'm like, okay, well, that's called a holly bush. And yes, I know what it is. We call it, it a holly bush. We call it a holly bush, and they're tearing them up because the <laughs> berries attract the birds and, and, and the birds. And the root balls are enormous. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they grow like that. I mean, literally, right. like, yeah. yeah. My dad's like, oh, damn thing. I don't want to tear can't it up. You get that out. Exactly. I'm going like, to hook it. Uh, yeah. I'm I, have, hook I have experience with that. I hook I a truck. A hook in a my truck. other house, I hook it a truck. It will literally pull a ball out. It literally pulled a watermelon. It's like an upside down, <laughs> uh, it's like an upside down umbrella. It is. Okay, it really is. It's like. We, <laughs> Which, by we, the way, I dug and dug and dug. I'm like, There's no way I'm gonna be, do that. Happens to be great for soil erosion. Oh yeah, I guess <laughs> you so. would have thought. Not going yeah, anywhere. <laughs> exactly, it's not going anywhere. So maybe we should put that on levees. Right. You know, oh, a levee. And <laughs> so why I'm not just put grass? <laughs> grass a little is hay. So deep. Spread, yeah, some hay. spread some hay yeah. on yeah. it. So, so yeah, Yopon. <laughs> Yopon. Yopon yeah. is a holly bush. Yopon is a holly bush. So this is where it gets fascinating. Yeah. So I. So this is where. This is fair. This, yeah. In no, the interview, I mean, this I is got the chills. If you could mark, if you could mark yeah, the timestamp yeah. here and go, this is where it gets fascinating. <laughs> All right. I just snorted. I like it. Oh I hope God. they picked it up. We'll cut that. Uh, yeah. No, no it's fine. No, we won't. I won't oh, chortle. we're not cutting. I, I, I call it a chortle. 
this is just that's a small, that's a good, that's it's like yeah. Less no, embarrassing. Yeah, it's like a corgi. It's more <laughs> over, over catfish. It's delicious. I'm this whole thing. We're gonna have to talk okay, okay. about this because you got excited about that. that. Is a number because you were yes. like, wait a minute, no one. I haven't no, seen that. you put that in an air fryer. I want to take it home with me and put See? it in an air fryer because you know air fryer. I air fry. Everything. Okay, get I, back to last, your pun. Yesterday, yeah, I'm wearing I, a t-shirt that says I air fry everything. <laughs> the hey that sent me because Icelanders don't have air fryers yet. Because it's not on the EU system. And if what? you take something, if you take an air fryer to Iceland and plug yeah. it in, the shit blows up. Trust Seriously? Me, I bought a brand new Trust stereo. You. I bought this fancy stereo with like vacuum tubes and everything. <laughs> I show up, I plug it in, it's like, poof. It's really? like a little purple light and a little smoke. And I'm like, oh. And they're like, oh, yeah, broken. Hmm. I'm like, oh. So 220 so versus air fryers. Yeah. Air fryers have not really penetrated Iceland. So <laughs> I've got I've got a, an entire team and of nice and seafood. And I'm like, just like, when are you getting your air fryer? Right. Because this is the product. This the is how rewire. we make this product. That is it. That is yeah. an air fryer hit right there. Spicy catfish. Nut. Oh, my God. Amazing. My God. I mean, buffalo catfish. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go back it's to the Yopon. Delicious. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Yopon. So this is the holly bush. Okay. And my friend Andrew, who's like an ethnobotanist, he's like, oh, you know that's all North America's only caffeine source. I'm what? Like, what? He's like, no, no, no. He's like, that's like that's the equivalent. That's indigenous to North America. That's endemic. Endemic. To the South. Endemic of, of means. Of course, the Vanderbilt grad. Endemic yeah. means both indigenous, uh-huh. but only. Oh. It only grows in the Southeast of America. Okay. It is not found on any other continent, any other place in the world. And so I start digging in, and and there was this gentleman, and Andrew's like, oh, by the way, my brother, and blah, blah, blah. And, and so so I get on a phone call with this guy, and this guy's like, yo, just don't, I got to tell you, just don't don't work with the Yopon brothers, whatever you do. <laughs> and I'm like, and this is like the Aria manual coming out right. in me. I'm like, so I pick up the phone, call the University of Florida, and, and they introduced me to Brian, <laughs> the, one of the Yopon brothers. Right. And I'm like, whatever. You, I'm like, yeah, whatever you do, don't do this. Someone, and I'm like, okay. someone warned me, <laughs> don't grab that. It's really hot. Oh, is it? Ah, <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> do you see that right there? My husband's like, do not do that. And I'm like, yeah, I, don't touch. Even mm. today, the painters were in our house. And I, and I, and I touched the door and I was like, well, now I have to touch it again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's something inside. Don't tell me not to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to have to do it. Uh, yesterday, Tamil and I were sitting watching the watching the mural being painted with Devin. And she goes, you know, Oliver, she's like, you are extra. She's like, and you hate the word no, don't you? And yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I, exactly I right. I, I hate it. I hate it's it. like, why no? Yeah. Why not? Maybe. Maybe. Keep it open. Keep Maybe it open. this yeah, way. Exactly. So fast. So so, I talked to Brian uh, White at Yopan Brothers and his brother Kyle and he, and I'm so fascinated because this was like the thing. I mean, if you could find a perfect story at a perfect moment at a perfect <laughs> time for a human being like me, yeah, that hates injustice, right? That loves the underdog. That this, yeah, Yopan was traded as a caffeine source as a ritual. Uh, you know, indigenous American product. Okay. It was traded as far north, so it grows in the southeast, as far north as Cahokia. Cahokia, I call it Cohica. <laughs> Cahokia, uh, which is north of St. Louis. Okay. So in America, 2,600 years ago, there were mound builders. It's called the Mississippian era. Uh-huh. And they're mound builders. And so turns out that ground zero... My dad, Morgan yeah. Freeman's Blues Club, yeah. is built on top of Quiz Quiz, mm-hmm. the largest, ma- second largest mound outside of Cohica, Ka- Cahokia. Uh, and so it was a very important commerce center based mm. on, you know, with the Mississippi, the Mississippi River, River, the Mississippi River, right River there. et cetera. Yeah. And they were trading Yopan uh, caffeine. So Yopan is very akin How's it to, extracted? So it is literally, you take the leaves off, you fire roast them if you want. Yeah. And you like brew a coffee it like bean. tea. Okay. No, it doesn't need no. to be fermented. No. It doesn't need to be processed. It doesn't need to be like so so it is a, a Yopan holly tea. Like the little tiny leaves. The little the, leaves. Yeah. Yes. Exactly huh. right. Yeah. And so it's can be roasted. It can be you can actually ferment it if you like. But so what I'm learning about this is and there are twelve giant thirty foot tall trees in my dad's yard. Right. 
Uh-huh. So I being they were already I, there. They, they were, were already there. there. They, they were, were there. growing. I mean, we made tea right. from the you yard. Know. I'm serious. And so I then get in touch with Brian, who is far more experienced in this. He spent the last ten years. He was he and his brother were like lifeguards on New Smyrna Beach, and they were you know he's a plant nerd, and and he's going around finding these leaves and you know it, because it's an evergreen too. Yeah. So it. So you know, and they're really cool looking trees. Like they kind of grow like bonsai. You yeah. Know? You can make them. You can make them really neat. They're right. different varieties. There's dwarf. There's weeping. You know. There's there's kind of the standard yopon, which is called Ilex vomitoria. Oh. Ilex vomitoria. And I'm like, why is this? So not a great here's word. what happens. Mm-hmm. How did slavery get to America through the sugarcane business yeah. through the Caribbean? Yeah. Why do they need a lot of sugar? Because East Indian British tea. Happens to have a lot of tannin in it. It's very bitter. So you have to put sugar. I gotta get a lot of sugar in it. Okay. So then, so now we're bringing in the slavery complex into the south of America. Right. Right. right? It's gonna find its root in building this horrible product. You know, at some point, lovely you know, king cotton, mm-hmm. which doesn't grow endemically mm-hmm. in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Right. It takes ninety three thousand liters of water per acre right. to make that to shit make work. work. Right. Yeah, it takes a bunch to of make chemicals. It natural. Yeah, to make it all natural. <laughs> you know. Organic cotton. Right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> shit going on there <laughs> with pesticides and this and that. You know, I even write in my book about the boll weevil. They made it worse. Yeah. They made that thing genetically right. modified <laughs> by putting DDT on it. It's like we got mutant shit now, walking around like. Rah. Now you really have problems. My dad actually has like a twenty foot tall boll weevil in his backyard. It's a piece of art <laughs> made out of a Volkswagen bug. That's like there's transformer boll weevils happening because you're trying to alter nature. Right. You know, it's like the alien thing comes out at you. It's like eat the cotton. Also, we can get stretchy jeans. Cotton. <laughs> <Right. laughs> So, you know what? Yeah, Never see, mind. It's all worth know. it. See, it's, it's always a positive spin. It's Never always mind. a positive spin. Stretchy jeans yeah. Ooh, thank God. are all worth That's it. That's right. But here's a guy who's, who's passionate about it. He his brother. They created the Yopon Brothers. This, you know, don't talk to them, you right. know. And and I just become really intrigued. And and so I was like, I want to make a maze. I had no idea. I mean, I literally just said it out loud. He's like, okay, great. 1,500 trees in an 18-wheeler. Like but, but like a corn three maze. Three days later. Like no, a corn maze. Like a corn maze, yeah. With yopon, with, with yopon trees. trees. You know what? I got real lucky. Number one is, I put this whole thing under this umbrella of like Delta Arts District. Right. It happens to be, the acronym is D-A-D. Dad. Oh. Mm. I didn't see that to the designer. Wow. I'm not kidding you. No, does, no, the, guess, does the logo guess, look like that? Yeah. Mm. It's D.A.D. with a sunflower. And again, you wouldn't have been back here unless you're, yeah. Correct. Means so then it turns out, I'm reading about mazes, people that build hedge mazes. Oh, they're all replacing them using Yopon holly because it's the hardiest bush and the densest this. So I'm like, you know what? And, I'm a maze you builder. Can't dig them up. And my husband is called Scott. I'm going to tell you, he's the one that planted the maze. Okay. He's much more attractive and more fit. <laughs> and he was out there. I mean, to see the blood, you know, just, to, just to also just be like, you don't have to do this. You yeah. realize that. And to watch him out there mulching these trees right. in the Sleeta, like we're back in Leaving ice in that ice yeah. storm, you know, right. in my dad's backyard. It's like behind the, you know. Yeah, we no, call it a hurricane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, to watch the passion going into this project yeah. from all sides is just incredible. And it's really meaningful. So Look do you the harvest the tea? So the tea is simply, it's hedged. It's I mean, just hedged. Is, Yopan grows everywhere here. It is yeah, literally. I probably have some in my yard. Uh, you, uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, nine times out of ten, that is yeah. an accurate statement. And what's crazy is outside of the Popeyes chicken in in Clarksdale yeah. is like a side ponytail yopon. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like literally like somebody got creative yeah. and made like a look what I'm gonna do. Like, yeah, exactly. An artist. Exactly. An artist <laughs> is born. That whoever trims the, you have a job. If it's you like could find Disney, me, it's like the, the man, Mickey Mouse out of the shrub. I mean, get, got going a side back home. At Clark I mean, my dad took me to Epcot when I was eight years old. You know, he's like I, Oliver. He's like every person comes out tired, and that's what inspired me at Disney. At fifteen, I won the science fair at Epcot. Yeah, so that's you yeah, talked about the science at fair. At thirty-five, I gave a tearful speech in the Epcot Bowl. No, you didn't. Becoming head of engineering, head of well, head of uh, uh, innovation at Disney. Yeah, with the Imagineers. I was like. This is a life circle. Yeah. Are you kidding because me? My this dad is where brought I can't, me. Yeah. Because Walt Disney, what he did. Do you ever stop and think about that? 
I think about it all the time. So you pinch yourself. Oh, absolutely. But do you think my, that some my people... business partner, Rob McGray, we were talking about this watch that we have, Brian and I were talking about yesterday. Rob McGray and I found each other at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place, and we we built Digicin together. Yeah. And, and we sold to Disney together. And I remember a note from him, and he's like, Oliver, he's like, you know, at some point we got to slow down for a second and realize how cool this is. Yeah. Like we got to pinch ourselves. And yeah. I remember, you know, his words are always in the back of my head of like, because look, I'm gonna tell you something. Moving six times in the last six months <laughs> from three continents is not fun. <laughs> you do not want to remember that. You don't want to pinch yourself and be right, like, "This right. is real." You, you know I what? Think that's you, why you only remember the good stuff. <laughs> great, you really exactly. do. You After really want to block it out. Yeah, you, you really want to block it out. You can even go on a vacation and. And you could have some terrible days. And yeah. when you leave and you come home yeah. after six months, you're yeah. like, oh, such the best. You remember and, the good stuff. And that's the way I felt going back home to Clarksdale. Yeah. I was like, look, I was like, this place was not necessarily kind to me. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> right. It wasn't necessarily like the most open, wonderful place for me. Right. My father stuck it out and did something amazing yeah. and put it on a world stage, on a global stage. Yeah. Clarksdale, like, I can't, it's so proud of me to walk in and see the Icelandic flag and the German flag. Of course. This, because the music bring people because together. that wasn't there. Uh, it oh, wasn't the there. Is, it didn't exist. It yeah. didn't exist. Don't you think the music, don't you think the music the brings all kinds of people together? Of course it does. And that's what I was getting back to about Coachella. Yeah. Is that normally they gave me my first ticket and I'm terrified of large groups. I remember being at Memphis in May and feeling like it was getting out of control. <laughs> it's like, ah, I gotta go. go. I gotta get home. I mean, like, I was, <laughs> per, I'm the first person, like, on the encore leaves the stadium to get they're, out they're of finished, traffic. They're finished, they're finished. They're finished, they're done. No, no, I hear another song, Ooh. come with me. If you're making a decision right now, if you wanna go back in that arena, go back in the arena. But I'm going home, find a ride. You know, I'm like a panic person like that at yeah. times. And so, I don't like large crowds in this. And I remember going by myself to Coachella with tickets that Norman Lear gave me and being like, wow, here's a group of 20,000 people that are not fighting, they're all mm. getting along. They're sharing a common experience, yeah. sharing music together. And that showed me the power of bringing people together with music and yeah. art, right? And so that's a secret weapon. Right. I mean, you know Clark it. Clark still has it. it. Absolutely. It disarms people. Yep. People feel themselves. They can be authentic. Mm -hmm. they, can, they, can, they can express themselves, you yep. know, they get creative. So there's a nexus there, sort of like an ice, and there's this weird energy, the place, you know. The, yeah. the, I think it was you, Dorwelt, or whomever said, like, it, the delta has its place yeah it has that feeling that, it does you know, have the a way feeling. that the way that the sky feels like a, a parabolic dome yep. over you the roots the history watching people kind of come alive there is so cool yeah and so just like in iceland we had we had a guest house guest every day trust right. me if you're on a tourist island right. you know that's why we bought a tiny house uh -huh. In Mississippi, so, with one bedroom, you can't yeah. come visit. Exactly, no, you can come visit the you town, can come visit. but not. That's exactly right. But you are not staying here for six weeks. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, because that trust me that <laughs> we've had people living in our house when we weren't living there. You right. Know? I mean, Azalea Banks lived well, in my so house. So Instagrammable. Six, you know? Exactly. It's right? very Instagrammable. Look at me. But regardless, we come home. We find this this um, this tea that this this product that's living in our yards. Yeah. I call it Brian. We hit it off. And I order 1,500 trees and an 18-wheeler. <laughs> and he's like, oh, by the way, Brian's they're like, arriving in three days. And I'm like, oh, I haven't really planned any of this. Wow. My dad's in chemo. I'm like, okay, okay, we're going to section I off jumped, this part of the yard. I jumped the gun slightly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still was having none of it. Like, you know, it's just like, it's like Oliver's come to town and here's the show ponies <laughs> and we're building a maze and blah, blah, blah. But and. And it's working out, but what's fascinating is we find well, this. You know what? You, just what your dad said. Yeah. If you say you're going to do it, just do it. You got to do it. You got to follow Coming in three I days, think... you're like, well, I don't have a plan, we but had we're no doing plan. it. I mean, we literally were sitting out there with a home, yeah. with a rented Home Depot auger being like. Yeah, because you I can mean, plan yourself to death. 1,500 of anything is a lot. Is a lot. It's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Let alone 1,500 <laughs> of trees that my husband is planting by himself. <laughs> I'm still being told about this. Like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Still, great idea. Thank yeah. you. But but what we found was this crazy story. So here's the story in a nutshell. The American indigenous Indians, who one of the largest populations for 2,600 years was Clarkstone, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. The largest population was Cahokia. And they were trading caffeine because in this vessel, mm -hmm. in the logo here, this vessel, yeah. right, uh, that was found with caffeine. And in it looks like a little sauce pot, like a little, it's I a would call it a little, I mean, they yeah, would scoop uh, it into yeah. 
what was called the black drink. Yeah. It was used in ceremonial purposes. It was a really important part of their lives. Mm -hmm. It was it's highly caffeinated, but it's that kind of yerba mate caffeine where it's 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 an even keel caffeine that gives you alertness and focus, but it also has theobromine. And theobromine is the pleasure molecule found in chocolate. Mm. And it has L-theanine, which is an assistant molecule into the absorption of this. And so you can sleep on this caffeine. Oh. See, that's the problem with brown tea, uh, with um, with uh, uh, regular uh, iced tea. Yeah. Is that, number one is you need a lot of sugar because of the tannins. Yeah. Because it's bitter. I don't particularly, I like the bitter, but, but you know, yeah. but I, because I also just, I'm kind of an anti-sugar kick. Number two is, um, my brother sent me this book one time called Potatoes Not Prozac. <laughs> I think he was suggesting something, and uh, <laughs> and and it, but it was basically don't like, read into it. The, the, don't the, read the, into <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, uh, trust me, after after whatever holiday Easter we just had, I'm reading all reading into, into it. it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you meant this when we were mm -hmm. 18. Yeah. Correct, correct. <laughs> no, but it's got and so it is a healthy product. It has you know high in antioxidants, but here's the deal: the British did not like it. Why would the British like it? If their industrial slavery complex is coming in through the Caribbean, it's going to do cotton. I'm going to trade cotton for what? For tea. Yeah. Because the British East India Empire, all the colonization is about tea. Mm -hmm. Right? What did we fight our independence in America about? Right. No taxation without representation over what? Tea. Yeah. Right? So here's a highly addicting substance yep. that we bring to America. But you've already got a native version that's actually better for you, that has no tannin, mm -hmm. that doesn't need the sugar. Doesn't have this the bitter. Is, this is no sugar, right? This is sweet in its nature. Yeah. And so um, they destroyed it. So they changed the name from Ilix Cassine or Ilix Cassine to Ilix Vomitoria. Wow. They called it the Savages Drink. They actually blocked the export from America into the UK. Mm. So they did a systematic so whitewashing smear campaign. Yeah, it went away. They wanted to tear it up. They wanted to villainize it, right? Yeah. This is terrible, 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 terrible. It's going to make you sick, this, this. It does not make you sick. Wow. The berries of the plant, if eaten, like any most yeah. holly berries, there will make you vomit. Right. Right? And so they just slandered it. Oh. And they whitewashed it. And then in the 20s, a guy tried to bring it back as a cola alternative. Because oh. if you notice the color, yeah, it, it is. starts it's off as like a light brown, and yeah. then it becomes darker. Yeah. In the refrigerator, without it, you know, you can't oversteep it. Yeah. But it doesn't have a tea bag in it. It actually kind of is this magical little color change huh. where it goes into that light green right. color from. And so, you know, I'm four months into this, and you know, we've been working very closely with the Yopan brothers. Yeah. They helped us create this. I want to see We have this. planted. So we planted 1,500 trees. So it turns out these are the first 1,500 trees. To cultivate yopon really in like 200 years or something really? these guys had already put a million tree starts in uh in a greenhouse wow uh, with a partner company that does and these are all clones yeah so the teacup maze that have you seen the aerial of that uh -huh. there's an yeah it, it, it's at yazoo yopon on on instagram and uh, delta arts district on instagram but you can see all the projects we're doing, but they're all kind of coming to a central purpose. Yeah. And so what we believe this is, is this is a tool for regenerative agriculture in a place that needs alternative crops. Right. Versus these Same old. commodified, yep. mm -hmm. like just like we were talking about, we met through catfish, right? The commodification right. of catfish. It's yep. like, let's make an all natural product. Like, ah, I'm so into this. Uh -huh. This catfish is fabulous. That's the best <laughs> catfish I've ever actually had in my life, to be honest. It's good. And, like so, and so I believe that we have a moment where my purpose and our purpose, and my husband, Scott, Gwen, and myself, our purpose in Clarkstone, Mississippi, is to build a model for economic development that is sustainable, that can go global, but that has an incredible story of retribution. Yeah. Right? And of reclaiming and the idea. And look, I'm a privileged white guy sitting here talking about sure. it. But hopefully I can influence someone to give people a tiny bit of hope and of inspiration and, wow. and to give also people a great product. Yeah. Right. And so I think all those things, which is the way we resonate, I believe. And I'm holding we share those values. And I'm holding a can and uh it's a great I love, of course, sticker. 
the <laughs> the labels with the different that's flavors. That's Frosty Nard. You like that yeah. peach and uh, Frosty Delta is Brew. one of the best designers I've ever worked with. Um, so we're, chai tea. By the way, you know we're Delta Magic. In Memphis Delta is, Magic. That what? So I call it Delta Magic fun? because uh-huh. this what this is is and I cannot pronounce this word correct. Roy Bois. Roybus. Oh, you were terribly close. I right. speak French. Yeah. Uh-huh. Roy French literature. Yeah, exactly. So it's but Roybus. What this is, yeah, is is a lavender coconut mm. tea. So it has, you know, zero calories. Yeah. But the way that you combine flavors, and because it doesn't have tannin, right, it creates this kind of slickery feeling on your tongue that yeah. almost simulates sweetness. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you look at Clarksdale, Mississippi, one of the highest incidences of kidney failure. What is that? That's poly, polyphosphates and polysorbates being put into catfish. Yeah. 18% by volume. Uh-huh. You look at, okay, what are they drinking? What are they consuming? Sweet tea? Sweet tea. Sweet tea has 60 grams of sugar sure. per serving. Milo's sweet tea has 45 grams of sugar in a day, right. tiny eight ounce thing. Right. Like that stuff is diabetes right. level seven. I mean, not to, you know, but this stuff, we got to learn that sugar. It's right. not natural for us to consume yeah. that much yeah. sugar, right? It's there was really a slave good. complex it, that made sugar, right? Because it, it doesn't. It's not. It's not easy to do. <laughs> I have to say, it's good. So, is it in bags? It's in tea bags. It's in tea so bags. This, this, so this, what you, you open? Do... So it's sachets. So you open this. Yeah. You know, it's like five tea bags it's... to a gallon of iced tea. Oh, so it'll make okay. No, these are these are you oh, know, regular. Oh, okay. yeah, it's just regular tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put okay. it in hot water and you steep it a little bit longer than normal. You can leave right. the tea bag. But you in can all make day. iced tea with you it. You can redo it. Yeah, that's what yeah. we just made iced tea oh, with. I know. It. Yeah. Oh, with oh, the no. vodka. Oh no, just don't no, worry. I'm finished now. Corky's Corky's will be will be serving <laughs> Yopan iced <laughs> it tea is in, good. In, in the near eighteen months. That's I have good. A feeling. So subtle. That's so subtle. I um, mean, you didn't commit to it. Those right. Were nice that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so Yopan tea. Yopan so tea. Where, where can you get it? You can buy it right now online yeah. at yazooyopon.com. Okay. Uh, or How do you Yopon spell Brothers. Y A U P O N. Okay. So Yazoo, of course, the the Mississippi Delta is defined by the Mississippi River, yeah. this alluvian floodplain in the shape of a triangle, so yeah. the Delta, and the Yazoo River is what cuts the bottom part all the way to Vicksburg. Okay. And that is that is where some of the ama- most amazing things of human culture have emerged from, <laughs> and some of the worst things of human culture that's, that's right. have emerged from. And so we we are just simply hoping. What we did is by doing this gimmick of a maze. Yeah. We now have multiple maze projects right. underway. I think that's so. We're cool. going to the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. You know, historically black college. Yeah. I was reading a statistic recently about that college that's that's inspiring to me. They took it, listen, it's from a low of 6.5% graduation rate yeah. to over 30% now. And so that to me wow. is a struggle. Like that's yeah. a struggle, right? Oh. How do we how do we educate people? How do we get people? Mm-hmm. So we're going to be building a maze there okay. in the shape of their logo. Yeah. Which is, by the way, <laughs> I'm like, hey, Scott, um, so we you committed said to You're going to do it. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if I see the UAPB in the main of the logo, but you know what? I'm like, hey, babe, we're just going to go on Google Earth, right. and we're going to use that. We're going to do an outline. So, we're going to do a grid, and we're going to make this work, you know? Because let me tell you something. Once you've done one maze, you feel like you could do yeah, another, but right. then you remember the pain. Yeah. See, yeah. I told you, you only remember the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then sometimes it's – but then also we're, we're looking at doing a big maze project near the Orlando airport. So like you know, I'm a showman. Yeah, you know, and and so look, we want to we want to be building these. But the thing is, is that the, the purpose behind it is that we don't need to own them. Right. Right. We want to give people an op- a small business. Yeah. We want to give people a regenerative agricultural story that's an alternative crop to being part of these commodified commodity products. Yeah. What happened to the southeast is the Great Migration brought a six million people out of there. And the culture kind of went with it. Right. The great diaspora of music. That's why we're building these murals to kind of pay homage to the forefathers. Of but what? But that? But what's interesting is the next series of murals is about the current talent. Right. It's about the kingfishes of the world. Twenty-two-year-old prodigy. You know. But guitar To me, player. it's connecting the connecting the line. Dots. Connecting the dots. Yeah. Yeah. Norman Lear always said to me, "He's like, you know what? 
the straightest path is connecting two dots. That's right. That's right. You know, and 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 so that's yeah, and the what music, we want to be doing. food, tea, you know, brings people it's together. Experience. It's a, it's yep. the experience. And which you, one's your and favorite? And you remember sticker? your and you remember experience. What sticker are we putting right here? What sticker? Yeah, you get one. We're of course, right I'm here. really drawn to the one you were pointing yeah, at. That's the one. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I that agree. was so subtle. It was like yeah, you ran yeah, some yeah. You, once a frame every yeah. however many seconds. All right, there we go. See, now it's a sticker part. All right, so tell me about your. Oh, that's um, great. Tell me about the other company that you've that you started. Your so, excited, Digifresh. So Digifresh. So Digifresh stemmed out of the necessity for uh, you know if you look at the seafood industry. Uh, and there's a there's a you know a documentary out right now uh, called Seaspiracy, but there've been others about the cod father and just right. It's it's a savage business. Yes. Okay. It's owned by a few. It tends yep. to be highly uh, just owned by a few. How yes. about that? A cozy That's oligarchy. <clears throat> a That's cozy good. oligarchy of people, and it's good if you're on that side. That's of right. The ownership. And so when I went to Ison, I, I was speaking at a conference about the brand of Ison. Do you like that I just keep eating this I love hot it. catfish while you no, talk? I was about to join you. It's yeah, so it's great. Like, okay. It's just, it is delicious. Yeah. All right. I mean, ahead. that's a really smart idea. Thanks. This is our hit product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get it. So, so Nison was born out of this. I was speaking at this Arctic conference, and I was talking about how a nation could brand itself and coming after the collapse, and they were still under the IMF restrictions. I was just like, look, you got Iceland, like, you know, we've set off a cavalcade of, of, of influencers that want their Blue Lagoon selfie. They want to do the Justin Bieber video shoot. They want to do this, this, this. They want to uh -huh. be on the plane on the Black Sand Beach and right. all these iconic images. Let's play into that. Yeah. Like, let's just make it cool. But mm -hmm. when people leave Iceland, just so you know, on Facebook, I have the ability to target them. Yeah. Geographically based on their past behavior. So yeah. I can target every person on Facebook over the last 90 days that left Iceland. Right. What you got in the stores for them? Yeah. Atlantic cod? That's not Icelandic cod. No. It's Atlantic cod. Yep. And it's like, and you go into Whole Foods, it's like Atlantic salmon, Atlantic cod, North Atlantic this, North mm -hmm. Atlantic. I'm like, well, where's Iceland? Right. Because it's all coming from Iceland. And what, makes, the their, what makes it so good? What makes it so good is that they created this program. And so at the time, then my dad was telling me about the catfish industry being right. destroyed in, in, yep. by Asian uh -huh. carp yep. by uh, by sway by um, uh -huh. all these different species that were being brought in and labeled as That's catfish. Right. Yeah, but they're not. Or you know, but they're not. Yep. They go. They range from tilapia to carp to this yep. to sway to rizza. Uh -huh. All these different things sounds like a band, and uh, and so your next brand, you know, possibly. provenance of seafood is important. I want to know where this fish came from. I want to know where it came from. Did it come from sustainable sources? So I'm speaking at this conference, and I'm talking about the brand of Iceland, and I've already labeled it Niceland because right. I did a cursory trademark search, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I own the global trademark. Well, we own the global uh -huh. trademark, the word Niceland, which is amazing. But that's also the eyes of the guests because people in Iceland are like, I'm tired of this cold volcanic island. Uh -huh. And I'm like, hey, this is the coolest place on earth. Right. <laughs> you know, like, and they're like, why are you even here? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, hopefully you're, you're kidding me, yeah. right? You're a humanistic society that you know <laughs> that lives sustainably that right. loves nature that has that hits over its weight in in uh art and culture like you're a ta you're a town of 360,000 people the whole island and you have won so many oscars so many grammys right. you've got bjork sigaross you know, galeo yeah. you know name uh, you know all these movies being you know all this stuff is happening here like wake up right you are spoiled white people now right. okay yeah. like Look. stop it yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so when I you know, so I was speaking at this conference, and there was this guy before me called uh, this I forgot his name, but he represented this thing called Fiskistofa. Mm -hmm. And since the seventies, during the Cod Wars, they wanted to prove the efficacy of yeah. their program. So they have the most sustainable fisheries in the world. Wow, the cod stock has increased year over year. Yeah, because they do what's called iterative management. They send uh, ichthyologists out on boats, study the the ocean and live yeah. with the ocean mm -hmm. in a vibe with the ocean that's living in harmony with nature and they've been able to reap rewards from the ocean right. but at the same time sustain it. Yeah. And so that really inspired me. And I was like, well, if I'm going to tell a story of provenance of seafood, 
it's going to come from here. Yeah. Because I know that I'm not going to get shot in the arm, <laughs> you know, because it's like, oh, you know, or whatever, uh, kicked in the gut. Yeah. On it, you know, when it being like, as a matter of fact, like, you, you gotcha. Like, you know, they're <laughs> killing dolphins and murder, right, you know, right, mar- right. You know, right. mauling, blah, blah, blah. And we've had an instant since we started in Iceland. A year into it, there was this gentleman there that I do not care for who started wailing again. Because it was this national right. Right, right, right. And he's still mad because Greenpeace, you know, sunk his whaling ship in the 80s. And he's mm-hmm. going to rah right. to the death. Get back. He happens to uh-huh. be very wealthy because he was one of the oligarchs of the fishing industry. Yeah. I don't even mention his name. And I'm sitting there being like, hey, guys, as a nation, this whaling shit, no bueno. Right. Instagram giveth this. and it taketh away. Right. Okay. Right. It gave the Blue yeah, Lagoon the selfie. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That image that I just saw of a whale on we'll the deck. Kill it. Uh, kill it. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so my business partner, Hayla, being much more sane than me, she led a coalition. She was the first, like, youngest female European parliamentarian. And they, like, were like, oh, cut right. the whaling. Yeah. So now we're good. You know, yeah, it's like we it's made true. change yeah. happen. And, and, you know, and we made it, we made it. Highly unprofitable, I right. think, is what it was for him to be doing that. Doing that, yeah. Because the whole nation's like our entire thing. Like we're doing great. Like let's keep going. Please don't bring back the bad. Right. And that's the way I feel about the South right yeah. now. It's like we're on a roll right now. Like Absolutely. Mississippi is open for business. Yeah. Here's the crazy thing. I go back there thinking like, okay, you know, everybody's gonna be like, oh, Oliver, isn't that great? Look at this show pony over here. Uh-huh. You know, the prodigal son returns. Right. You know, but. You know, yeah. that, you know, screw you. Right. Instead, Scott and I have been met with the most warm, open arms from people that are just like, great. Yeah. A new, fresh perspective yep. on a place. You see you're in it to win it. Like, let's do this. Right. And the count, the city of Clarksdale, from the mayor, Espy, to, uh, to the county of Clarks, to Coma County, to the state government, which I'm not really allowed to talk about all. Yep. That in itself has been the most rewarding thing because I'm coming back with new ideas and they could not be more supportive. That's incredible. It's like, I mean, so much so that we're setting off a little bit of a snowball because Mississippi is actually an incredible place to do business. Yeah. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. We have a new flag. Yep. Because I'm going to tell you something. My book starts off, you know, with the Confederate flag. Right. And how right. that is just not part of my right. existence. Right. My dad and Morgan Freeman had fought for 36 years to get rid of that flag. Right. And it's also part of the way that things change. Yeah. When you see a gentleman in South Carolina walk into a black church and kill nine people and right. drape himself in a flag, yeah. that's like an antigenic response. Right. I know that's bad now. Yeah. And I'm going to do everything to get rid of it. And social media but allows us to do that. But you're not complaining about it. You're, no. you're, you're, you're making changes for the better. I was part of the hashtag, the take it down. Yeah, you but, know? You're, but you're, you're part of and I'm observing a resurgence and, and something better, not just complaining that and, and, this is bad. And unfortunately, whatever. a global pandemic that right. makes people right. reassess their values <laughs> yes. and maybe go back home a little bit right. and make, and, you know, and I, I go home, I have 120 megabits a second on my mobile phone in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh-huh. I think I'm the only person using 5G there, except for the other people that are on Google Fi, which you, you can still have an iPhone and okay. use Google Fi. Good. I highly endorse that product. Okay. But I travel the world, and, and that that is a great phone service because I can get. Uh huh. It's a great phone service. People ask me what phone. We can put a disclaimer. Samsung, again. Yeah, yeah. Disclaimer. Uh-huh. Exactly. Right. I don't want to get back into the religious war <laughs> of iPhone versus the others. Uh huh. No, but you you can do business there, and so you know I get 300 megabits a second in my house. I'm like, okay. Hey, you know what? I just bought a house with an acre yeah. and three bedrooms, twenty one hundred square feet. Yeah, and it was fifty five thousand dollars. Right. This place rocks. Yeah, and like, it's and cool. I got fiber. And there's and all it's kinds cool, of people. And there are all kinds of interesting people coming yep. through. And there's cultural tourism. And now that it's opening back up, and I'm going to witness this weekend a monkey riding on a dog That's at right. the Jute Joint Festival. Of course. I mean, I mean, what would you I'm expect gonna t- anything less? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. As a person who is fascinated by circus sideshows, like my next big piece of art, I want to buy one of those giant tents with like the bearded lady uh-huh. and the, right. you know, just I love and Geek Love by Catherine Dunn is my favorite book of all time about the Bukowski family, the circus sideshows that create a cult. Right. Everybody wants to be like Arturo the Flipper Boy. Yeah. 
that is, I, I feel like I might find my new calling. I mean, I feel like after this weekend at Juke Joint, I might join. <laughs> right. you in the circus. I'm at the circus. You're, yeah. You're I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like my destiny is about, yeah. <laughs> Don't commit to it yet. You've had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two now. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So Digifresh. So, yep. so Digifresh is yep. basically storytelling technology that is applied to the product. So if you actually scan this. Yeah. Like, use your phone and scan that. It's over there. Put it away so I wouldn't oh, look at it. Oh, I see. You're more well, important than my hand, phone today. Well, this is a Digifresh customer myself. A actually, QR I, code. I actually now, have to pay Digifresh. That now. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the QR code is It's just a QR there. code that now everybody understands how to use. Right? Correct. Because but they've been around for a long time. They've been around for a long time, um, but they've been built into the iPhone and into the Android platform for three years. Mm. But everybody suddenly felt, you know, had the need to learn how to scam one by simply opening your camera and pointing at it. Yeah. And so what Digifresh was, Digifresh started off as the traceable system for nice and seafood. Right. Hey, will you actually hand me that Yeti? So when but, you can... Um, so so you I can, brought you a, you a could thing scan. Of, of Arctic char. So you could scan a fish that you buy. Right. And you can see, you can so trace it all do, the way back. So what you do is, is what he's is doing scan, is he's got this vacuum ish sealed. This is sealed. called 10 OKR. This is an oxygen permeable membrane. Yep. That is put into a, a piece of uh, that's wrapped around a piece of frozen Arctic right. char. That's right. This is actually raised in the lava fields of Iceland, right near the Blue Lagoon, right near the new volcano. The gifts don't stop. This okay. is this is raised in the and is raised in glacial Icelandic water. Mm. Heated by geothermal sources, so this is like carbon negative uh -huh. product here. Yep, and it's only sent on transport planes that are tourism planes wow. or commercial airlines are yeah. moving. Yeah, and we have an algorithm to slot them into the luggage oh, compartments, wow. into boxes that I put stickers all over. Oh my gosh! So they of course, look like of luggage. Course. No, but you'd imagine how no. many pictures on Instagram we have of people watching the nice and fish come into the plane. Of course, yeah, on the luggage rack. And so when you, you know? when you flip this over and you scan the exactly. QR code, and so this is sold online. It tells online. you. It yeah, I'll tells do it right you now. Um, where it, it was caught. It where, it was, where well, in this case, where it was farmed. Farm, aquaculture. Yeah. Uh, who processed it? Yeah. The plane ride it took. The processing it took everything about it so it tells you the provenance and the story of the fish so to me but it builds it also, trust and it, it absolutely builds it trust. builds trust in knowing hey this just didn't come sitting in some freezer forever and, and it's not it's, a marketing gimmick yeah right yeah this is actually the provenance the legitimate history you know what it does to me it connects the because i love you know i sell things by story uh, because to me everything has a story and and that's what you like it's like you're giving someone a gift it's it you're it's the story it's how they feel and if you're if it's food which is what i do and i sell stuff you can't smell right. taste you know touch and when you get it home uh, the biggest compliment for me is when someone serves it to their family which they trust me enough to do that and then they get to tell the story that i told them then they're continuing that story right. on. And to me, this is connecting that story. So we actually plug in to the actual shipping system of the airline. Wow. So we can show you the, the actual fish. And this is sold through a company called Crowd Cow, which yeah. is an online retailer of products. Yeah. And so here are their recipes. There's the Karen handling. It shows you the port. You can actually go onto the boat that it's part of. And so you can actually see the entire life story of wow. that fish. I think that's going to be huge. Because... You know, again, it's it's not just the story. It's right. that you feel you, you can trust it more, and it's not a marketing gimmick. It's a, hey, you're having this fish from Iceland, and you're like, yeah. oh, is that, oh, is and, that and, good? And then you see the whole process right. of it getting in here. That's it's right. amazing. And, and people, you know, people are really focused right now on understanding where their food comes yeah. from. Yeah. They, they've seen the supply chain breakdown right. during the thing. They also want to understand the utilization of it. Yeah. Like, just give people helpful hints. Yep. So, like, for instance, we rolled out across all the Whole Foods with solely essential oil products. Yeah. And th there is a little bit of complication that you need to mix some and, you know, right. do this and do this, some fun formulas and this. And so to watch, because on the back end for the actual brand itself, you're watching what people are interested in. Right. You can see which panel yeah, you know. they click through, which wow. one they double click on, which one, where are they, what, you know. So what you're doing is, for from a business perspective, it's like every product has a story, yeah, and every product becomes a store. So if someone was to say, "Oh, that's Big Brother watching me," what do you what do you say? I know what I would say to that. What would, what do you say to that? Well, 
I'm going to tell a, I don't think jump there's in. a big brother. C, uh, okay. I, I think that everything we do is monitored. We but shouldn't I, expect. I agree, you know, but let me tell you what, but what I think. Into it what I well. think is, is, is it allows me or allows you, allows the, the company to be able to give you a better more experience. of what you're interested That's in exactly and right. a better experience. And it kind of goes back That's to exactly when we right. first started this conversation seven right. hours ago. <laughs> um, How long has it been? I have no idea. And then it, it was don't tell people what to do. And so exactly, but the information, that, like they love, they love the recipes. They love the recipes That's with this exactly fish. Right. And Give maybe they, they see the, you know, the plane ride over, but maybe they really want to see the recipe more Then putting the recipe at the top of the page is not, you know, watching over your back to me, it's giving, giving you exactly what you want and making it easier for you, which is a better experience all the way through. That's right. That's the way I look at it. So like here, here, I just scanned the T cam for you. And so this is a little surprise and delight, you know? Yeah. But then it's like the history of Yopan. But it also says, it was, yeah, what's inside, you know, what's what, inside. Yeah. It's like peek inside. That's right. That's the whole idea. Wow. That's the whole idea. And then it talks about, you know, the mural projects, we're doing the maze projects, the peaches, our values. We have a playlist so you can actually <laughs> listen to the music uh, from Clarksdale, et cetera. That is you great. Know? And so we're just, we're playing with it. And then you can buy it, goes to the commerce. Yeah. And so what we're doing is I think we're adding value to the product by giving it interactivity that yep. it deserves. Yep. Because in this case, I have an inquisitive person. Yes. Who wants to peek inside. Right. And they actually want the information they, so in they, no way am i violating the their trust i'm no, not spamming they want the experience they want the experience they want yeah. to learn more yeah yep i think it's great i think we're going to give away sticker packs sticker having packs. now sat here so <laughs> i have okay so let's this is totally oh i guess off subject sure. but juke joint festival yeah um, i've never been okay so i, I know that there are monkeys on the backs of dogs. dogs but at least you're not obsessed with that <laughs> <laughs> My, I've changed my WhatsApp image <laughs> and my Zoom image to the monkey the on, on the dog, dog because the just I think it's I mean I don't want to upset anyone from yeah. an animal rights perspective but it looks like both the dog and the monkey are having fun. are having bliss. I, I, I know mean, my dogs like, would have a blast. Oh my god! Yeah, just the the combination That's of right. the silliness the circus, and they're wearing little it, how, it, little cowboy kind hats. of the definition of a circus. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what P.T. Barnum said: <laughs> "One's born every minute." <laughs> So, all right. So I went on and I, I have, have four tickets. Obsession. I have four tickets on third on, awesome. on, on for Saturday. Here's the thing. I've got QVC hour show on Saturday. So this thing continues. It's fine. I mean, but you what, have when an is, hour show? Yeah, but they're 24 hours on Saturday. So what time does it, you think? I it, think uh, what Saturday. Time if show? I got there at 7 p.m., would that oh, be too late? I think that's a perfect time. All right, that's a perfect. Sorry, time. Elizabeth, you don't get my tickets. Yeah. Yeah, so you must come down oh. because I think I think you will miss I, the monkeys. But by that point, I will have already coerced the monkeys and everything. To come I have perform a feeling at my that house. I will see the monkeys I on social see, media. <laughs> no, I think you'll, uh, I, I will see a video. My goal, my goal. There was a puppy in a photo recently, but we're not going to adopt a monkey or a a dog or a combo monkey dog. I always kind of wanted a monkey when I was a kid. I mean, who doesn't? I know, but you don't really. I don't think. <laughs> it sounds. Cool. How do you find the little diapers? There? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's. I don't want to take care of it. I just want to have it. But um, it's like children. Yeah. It's like we have decided we are not having yeah. children. I it's love to like get monkeys. my brother's children and give them like sugar cubes. I mean, literally. Oh, I'm wow. Them sugar oh, cubes at yeah, you know what I do? And then send them home. You know, <laughs> this yeah. It's really funny. Uh, so, and, uh, and all my cousins and my, they know I'm the uncle. I'm the guy that brings the keyboards, the drums. Oh, that's I awesome. bring the toys the that make the most noise. The cacophony. Loud. Yeah. I give an H year since my. My grandparents passed away. <laughs> we've we've done Christmas Eve at my aunt's. Wait, did you grow up in Memphis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually live on what the street with you... my grandparents. Well, I'm sorry, live on right un here. underground. What, what school did you? A rival school? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, of course, I a see. rival school. I see. I see. But I'm, you know. Yeah, I saw the I'm open. Tone. I'm open. I saw the other town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so every year, yes, my I stepfather the loud, went to your the loud noises. <laughs> And the toys, yeah. and I also give everyone, Maybe every kid, the indoor <laughs> firework that shoots confetti. We do that as that's I funny. Love it. We do my those, cousin goes nuts. 
God. We do those that every person at the table gets one. It's so fun. We Especially do when it's not at your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's confetti there for another year we call somewhere. It it. Yeah. All right. We're awesome. going to move on to wow, dessert. Are you kidding me? Banana I call pudding. it short and sweet because, you know, again, we've been here for six hours, Oof. but uh, banana pudding. Oh, my God. It's, you know, it's favorite. a staple with. Um, with Southern barbecue, Steve, yeah. with Southern, it's, you know, bananas, pudding, vanilla wafers. With oh, little, see, it's amazing. I yeah. value it based on the crisp of vanilla wafer. But, well, you have to have that. You have to. It has to be crisp still. Yeah, it has it to. It can't be. have. That's right. That's right. I wow, love banana pudding. Good. I love good banana pudding. All right, so what I do in the dessert round is I just do rapid fire, since All we've right. talked a lot. Just to get the first this thing. Is the truth serum? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Just to get the first thing that pops in your head. Yeah. Win- window or aisle? Aisle. Me too. Board game? Favorite board game? Oh, Monopoly. Oh, that's boring. All right. Um, I used to play the game of Risk, but it was on the computer. Ri- so it was a board uh, game, but I yeah. couldn't. That's you could have said that. Risk right. is the best. Risk. Risk is by far the best. Um, one thing that you still have from childhood. Oh my god! Everything. I'm a hoarder. Are you? <laughs> I have my microscope. I have my big track. Remember the big track, the six wheel first programmable computer toy for kids. Well, you had no. like burr, 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 and it was like six wheels and it had a dump truck. Really? It looks like a lunar uh, okay. like a lunar lander. I have the original 1979 big track. Wow! I am a hoarder. Something you can't do. What's something you can't do? <laughs> I can't. Oh come on. I can't run anymore. That sucks. Yeah, but you uh, could. What can't I do? I I don't know yet. That's good. You can do anything. My mom always told me I could be anything and do anything. And I, I believed can't her. Sing. Really? I can't sing. Although some people say I can sing. You I can't can. sing. I sound funny. I can sing. I can't make music. You know, that's actually the one thing mm-hmm. that I play such an instrumental role in other people's lives. Yeah. I actually, I can paint. I learned that. I can paint. Okay. I can't make music. There's something weird about it. I can't I, paint. I can sing, but I can't The paint. thing about it is is that I think my mind works in a way that like I have to really narrate it to myself what I'm doing. Right. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, talk I have to be my this. inner narrative, yeah, that's right. you know? And I don't have the I, I remember living with this guy named Rami Perlman, Ixop Perlman's son. Mm-hmm. He's an incredible musician. His father's, you know, an iconic musician. And I remember sitting there, and we, 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 we were living in West Hollywood at the time, and I had just moved back from Spain. And I remember sitting there being like, give me the vocabulary to be able to talk about music uh-huh. in a way. It's like, okay, what's this? Like, this is the beat, right? And this is the drop, and this is the right. this and this. And I just still can't. Yeah. So I can't make music. Yeah. I think that's really the answer. That's yeah. I okay. just don't have the vocabulary That's to good. describe it, but yeah. I can like I have you Bob Ross it. in my head, and I can paint the little tree. I love Bob Ross. No, I have, but I mean he I narrated it. Bob Ross it. Um, air freshener hanging in my car. It's a friend of mine. We, I have we a think Gucci it's very ghost. Funny. Yeah, that's a good question. Funny. What air freshener? Do you? I have a Gucci. Ghost I have a Bob Ross head hanging a, in my car. I would trade you a Gucci ghost for a Bob Ross, but I feel like that's too um, <laughs> pizza topping. I like mushrooms. Okay. And Hawaiian pizza, I really love. Oh that. my god! I know it's a, li- it's. I knew it's a religious Holy thing. Holy cow! Like we had a whole thing with the president of Iceland who wanted to do ban pineapple on the pizza. Okay. Uh, figure. Um, I thought we were. I thought we were going to get along. Then no, we have sudden. a lot of opposites. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay. First of all, the high school we went to. That's true. That's true. Uh, Elizabeth, remind me to donate a bigger art gallery to Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, favorite dessert. What's your favorite Banana dessert? pudding. Oh, come on. It really is. You're playing to it. I'm not kidding. It's the ultimate Southern I dessert to me. I'm not kidding. It's is it my not? favorite dessert in the world. And, and there's all kinds of great Southern desserts to me. Pies and cakes and uh, all this kinds of baking. everything good. But there's because something about it. it's almost like a it. creme brulee. And, you know, you can actually air fry things like this. <laughs> Back to the air fryer. Yeah. Air fryer. You know, people, it's, it's people, oh, people it's the next are converted mic- it to is air the fryer. microwave. It's, the it's mic- better than the microwave well, because it it's not using, I mean, by the way, everybody's like, I'm so worried about the 5G towers. And I'm like, you are microwaving everything you have. <laughs> exactly. That is 2.5 right. gigahertz. Just right. FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite vacation spot. And you've been all over. Oh, uh, Iceland. Where do you want to go? Have you never been? I've never been to the Philippines okay. or any part of. Uh, I've never been to Japan actually, mm. and I have deep friends, artists that live in Japan. So I think Japan is on my next list. Okay. 
What's the most recent recent binge watch? Home, uh, hometown. hometown. The people in Laurel, Mississippi. So I met this girl up front of our house. Okay, that's a great show. Hometown, yeah, it's a great With show. Aaron I want to go to, La- yeah. No, well, I want to. I relate. I feel like I'm that guy. Hometown. I'm like I'm the bearded you know big what? guy that. What's you know. his name? Aaron and um. I'm so used to uh, Chip and Joanna. Can, yeah, because they were like our friends. That's right. Ben. ben, Ben, and Aaron. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, yes. they yeah. have a new child on the way. I learned. Uh-huh. Uh, they do a great job with houses. You know what? They, you know what it is about it is you feel like you know them. You do. There's, but also it's the American story. Yeah, it's Laurel, Mississippi, and they're it's, taking their town. No, they listen, listen. So I'm working with all these economic development people. Yeah, and we, you know, we were doing yard work in our house, mm-hmm. and uh, and this woman comes up with one of the guys from the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, and she's telling me, and I had no idea that Laurel, Mississippi existed right. three weeks ago. We've watched five seasons of this show, but we're so connected with it yeah. that like I'll like be like friends on LinkedIn with the people. Right. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, oh, because we're trying to do this in Clarksdale. Yeah, you know, like they those two people single handedly rewrote history. Yeah. By building this show around that town, that town is thriving right now. But it, people are moving. When it into first it. came out, I think everybody thought that oh, this is like a this is spin off of spin. like Chip and Joanna. Oh yeah, you know, it's blah, blah, blah. a hokey thing. But it's yeah. not. It's, it, it's to me, it's different. totally different. And you know what else I love about it? I think they share their secrets. That's why it's, I was asking to Scott they last do, night. They share their but, secrets. But here's what else I like about it. To me, it's very normal people that. Are looking for a house. This is not. That's exactly hey, right. I sell straws out of my house, and we're our budget's one point five million dollars. Exactly. You're like what? You know, these people no. are so real, that is the draw. and it's like our budget's one hundred twenty thousand. And I just sold a museum in, in Iceland, uh-huh. and I just bought a house for fifty five thousand. Yeah, sixty nine dollars with closing costs. <laughs> right. Okay? Right. I feel better than I've ever done. That's the best economic decision I've ever made in yeah. my life to invest in Clarkstone, Mississippi. And I, it feels good. But they're bringing the old back. They're bringing the good parts back our, that made the memories of that town anyway. I think that's a great show. Good call. I, I also, and you know what else is cool about it is it's attainable. It totally exactly is. Exactly what you're saying. It's it attainable. Is. It's just, the they're just idea, a couple who can design and paint and, and do it themselves. Redo stuff. Yeah. And, and so it's, you know, I've been, I've been literally going through that. That process, as you say, I've got, yeah, yeah. I've been going through that process of just doing it yourself and really enjoying it and hiring local people and just and feeling it and yeah. being part of it. Yeah, and I think that's also what's resonating with people is COVID has shocked the system. It has. COVID has but shocked some the system great ways in incredible ways. Yeah, I see a new America right. coming out of this. Yeah. I see a rebirth. Yeah, I love what yeah. happened. There's a lot of great areas. Yeah, there's a lot there's of great str- lots of struggles. Oh, uh, you know, not horrible all that, things. But I, but there's also these things that we have a, a lot of the nostalgia because I love nostalgia. Yep. A lot of the nostalgia. You know, nostalgia is the most powerful emotion. I Remember we're talking about oh, Toy Story that's three? Me. That's why You've I keep got pictures. A in me. I, I love pictures. Yeah. Remember that's nostalgia. Oh yeah. And so the love of nostalgia and to then give people an architecture to express nostalgia right. is the most powerful emotion. Uh, to on me, the memories and nostalgia. I love it. And so. Um, it's the way our you brain know, works. The, exactly. Yeah. So, and they're bringing that back. It's to the whole I town. I love it. It's not just, oh, we're going to cook some I house here it. or we're going to go over here. Yeah. But also, Great call. just not being stressed out by something you knew you couldn't afford to begin with. Yes. By being put into Keeping this system. The by the way, I mean, I, I, you know, if there's a question of what I dislike, yeah. Unfortunately, it's bankers. I dislike <laughs> that because banksters, the, entire, the banksters, banksters, the entire idea is to take an artificial construct yeah. of money yeah. and make it the most important thing. Right. Hey guys, like you're a human being. Yeah. You need food, you need water, you need subsistence. Let's go make something over here like diamonds. Right. Really important. Right. Diamonds are just fucking charcoal it's, and it's, on pressure. Okay. It also says you can't have this. You can't have you're this. Not, so it you're not good enough. Exclusivity. Right. It creates that that's why I was saying like my proudest yeah. moment was to be like the IT guy at a fancy bank yeah. where everybody was privileged in this. And I'm like, I'm actually making more money than you. I'm actually on a better I'm career path it. in technology. I'm <laughs> loving it. I'm working a hundred hours a week. Yeah. I'm not, you know, stinky I totally feet didn't, in your I, I totally didn't follow a, a, a normal path. So I totally get that. Yep. Um, 
ask the residents because we didn't follow the normal path. <laughs> yeah. And I was jealous of it for a long time. Oh, my God. I was so jealous of it. Yes. Sure. Are we still recording? <laughs> no, I really was. I was it bothered totally me for a jealous. long time. That and I, I was, was a little vindictive at one point. That. I remember yeah. being a little torturous to some bankers yeah. one time in a meeting because I was more successful than they were at that right. time. And I was a little mean to him. And I was like, this is, oh, I see. This is Oliver the bully. This is how, this yeah. is how it works. Remember? It actually kind of feels good. Right. Until you think back on it. You're like, I was a jerk. Yeah. Um, we've talked about your, good. you know, our favorite gift. Um, art. art. Always give someone art. That's nice. Morning or night person? I would say I'm night. More of, I'm more of a night person. I was going to say, yeah. Um, Although I can get up in the Hobby? Morning. That's, you know, creating things. I love, my hobby is actually like giving people a platform to do things. Mm. It's totally my, my hobby. It's like what I thrive for. Like, I know right now, I'm like thinking, it's now the rain has stopped. Yeah. And I know Devin Liston. Right. I'm like thinking in my head, like, that's the first call I'm going to make yeah. is to the artist making the mural. Yeah. And then, because I've already made the phone calls to the mural we're picking up, because we're doing two murals simultaneously. Yeah. We have a population of three. Right. You know what I mean? And like, so it's getting things done is my hobby, whatever they are. Yeah. I love watching. It's like vacuuming the carpet is the most satisfying thing in the world. Oh, to me, it's like pressure washing. Power washing. Same thing. I just discovered power washing. It's the best. Yeah. I, I power get, washed the lose, wall yesterday. You can lose three hours. It's unbelievable. Instantly. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's like my father. I'm going to show you a photo that I took yesterday okay. of my father. His joy is he has a large 10 acre yard yep and here, here's some images of it but his joy is literally on the riding lawnmower but he has one of these uh -huh. that uses the paddles oh the zero turn yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly this is him doing the maze last night he's like hands free uh mowing the yard yeah that's his thing that is my father's zen right that oh, is it's his, great it it's was the great. coolest thing to see I love the uh, pressure just, washing cut. Yeah. Yeah. Not vacuuming. But. Well, it's things you yeah. see. And look at that. And I think it's I mean, repetitive. Is, I think because my life is so not chaotic, but I have so many things going on, so many different people, so well, many different projects. out of your control. So and then pressure washing is completely within your within my, <laughs> and I can go over the same line. I can go, that line's not as light as the other. Yeah. Okay. So what, what I have a question for you. Mm. What technique you do you use with power washing? Because oh. I have learned that if you scoop with the power washer, it actually lifts it off. Yeah. I know it sounds ridiculous, uh -huh. but you can kind of You can come in from, from the side. Yeah. yeah. So I have, well, it depends on where, but then I got this attachment that's like a vacuum and it's round. Oh, I've had that. Oh, it's like a vacuum that's for, the that's for the patios and the, around the pool. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. It's not great for removing something. It's great for sustaining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, think that's yeah. a sustainability tool. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it was around our a patio and pool and stuff. It's totally covered in trees. So it's always yeah. it's darker every year, and so you come back and, and that tool is amazing. It's like vacuuming the the years worth of dirt that sunk into the concrete. See, away. we only used it briefly, but we were really doing a power scrub on the on the sidewalk and oh, the, yeah, yeah. the drive. Yeah, and then we just gave up and we called the brick man, <laughs> and he's and like, we're like, minutes. you know what? Please tear this up. No, we just destroyed the whole thing. <laughs> We're like, we want bricks. We don't want this concrete. Never mind. The that's brick man. All, he's awesome. an icon. Okay. I mean, we didn't talk about half the things I want, but I think I've had an I awesome had conversation. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, he, the one thing. Here's my. I found a banana. <laughs> did you? The one thing that I kind of picked up on throughout this, and I'll and I'm gonna I'll bring it up right before the end, but. You, you have this way of your you have the ability to talk about all the things that you've done and accomplished, which is which truly it's amazing. All the things I know you said you pinch yourself, the companies you started, the things you've done, the people you've met, and throughout that, every, when you're when you're mentioning that, you mention it in a way where you sound humbled. But you always, in every circumstance, if you go back and listen to this, mm -hmm. you mention the people. Sure. You mention someone else. Sure. You give the credit. You Thank recognize you. them. You. But you do it in a way that's very unintentional. Whether you try or not, I don't know. But you do. It's well, very the unintentional. Only reason that it existed. But it's. It was me amplifying it. But it's. It wasn't my idea. It wasn't me. It was like finding someone 
that really understands and loves what they're doing yeah and sharing with them what i have to give them well it's, it's amazing like, it's the coolest thing and you thing. cheer for the underdog and, and the artist i think i love I've, i haven't ever don't i've never done something for an artist but i I love well, their work. Their I love their work, and you know, you I don't know if they get to experience art. afterwards that I go, oh, you know, you tell about it and and you enjoy it, and you hope other people enjoy it. But uh, I, I think it's amazing. I love that. But that's that a is great, that's a that's you a great you talk about people's I names, and, and that's amazing. Um, I didn't even get to use my soundboard much or anything. Stop! 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 Okay, darling. Uh, uh-huh. So, all right. So, listen, I want the Miss Cleo look, soundboard. Do you remember that one? <laughs> we're gonna. Okay, darling. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna finish it up. And... The Sagittarius. <laughs> See, I got. It. I told you I wanted more sounds. <laughs> um. All right, this is kind of how I ended it. Um. I hope you enjoyed your meal, had fun, enjoyed the conversation. How could I not enjoy it? This is like my. I, I know. Talk about I did. Nostalgia. How great is that? How many times I've eaten in this restaurant? <laughs> And then, and, and so there's a family fight, you know, it, between the other people. Oh, of course, of I course. Have a middle name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm a, I'm a Corky's. Person. That was good. I love was it. Was it Dan Quayle that came here? Yeah, of yeah, course he did. Of the course. traffic stopped on Poplar. They I'm aware. They blocked it off. Yeah, they blocked that it was, off. Yeah, that's really funny. Wow, that was a. So, so <laughs> I don't know if we hope. Here's the thing. Here's my now? here's here's my here's my hope to everyone listening. My hope is to inspire everyone listening to call an old friend or someone they want to get to know yeah. better. Invite them to a meal and have a great conversation. Thank well, you, you Oliver. That. Thank you, Thank Oliver you. Luckett. I appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. That was really cool.